What's up, everybody? What's going on? Look, y'all say y'all thought y'all mixed it. Uh, I'm seeing the comments. Uh, here we go. Yeah, hit that like button. This is the four year anniversary of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. Listen, thank y'all so much for rocking with me for so many years. Uh, I'm excited to bring up a lot of my guests. Somebody cast said, What's up, Terry? Uh, yeah, that's somebody who must know me from back in the day. Um, but yeah, bringing up a lot of our past guests, um, we're just going to chop it up, find out where they are now. A lot of y'all been DMing me, asking me what happened to so-and-so and what happened to so-and-so. And so today we'll take uh, a few minutes to just catch up with some key people. Uh, the podcast has been very transformative to, well, for people all over the world. So I don't take that lightly. When I launched this podcast on April the 15th of 2020, I had no idea what I was doing. I just said I want to heal in front of the world. Um, didn't know what that looked like. Didn't know how that would translate with audiences all over the world. Didn't even know that it was going to reach all over the world. I was just healing out loud and hoping that it provided some type of value for just people. Just people. That's it. I just want to touch people as I allow God to touch my own life. Um, as I told y'all today, we're going to, um, at the, the second part of this live will be the introduction to um, the Love Blueprint. It's going to be a three-day masterclass. Um, it's going to be amazing. Like I said, today is the, the first day, and it's going to be three days to Wednesday. Uh, continue rocking with us. Um, I have a question with you. I have a question for you right now. It's over a thousand eight people on this live. Are you shacking up with us? Because if you're still shacking up with us, come on, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. We are at 505,000 subscribers. But when I look at the analytics, it says that our content, it says that our content um, is viewed, well, basically, 60% of the people that consume the content aren't even subscribed. So I, don't, I don't even understand. This is free. So how do you not subscribe to a free platform? I don't understand. And that's how you can show me your appreciation. I mean, last night, I spent the night in my office working on things. Um, woke up this morning. I did an interview with Tina and Teddy Campbell at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they just came in last night, and so they want to do an interview real early uh, before they did another interview and headed out. But I'll be rocking. I mean, I spend a lot of time, a lot of energy um, making sure that I can give y'all amazing content. And just to show your appreciation, all I ask for you to do is just like the video, leave a comment, and most importantly, subscribe. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, do the same there. Subscribe to the podcast. and. Um, Leave a comment and leave a review. And that's how we continue to rank as the top relationship podcast in the world. Let me ask y'all this. Um, first of all, I'm so excited to share this moment with you all. Today being the fourth anniversary of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm so excited that y'all be joining me today. Again, we're at 1135. Make sure that you hit 1135 viewers right now. So that's really, really dope. Make sure you hit that like button. Again, we're going to be bringing some guests on shortly, uh, but I just want to do some little house um, cleaning rules. Hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button, and people on YouTube will be notified about this. But in a moment, we're going to welcome some of our past guests to celebrate this moment with us. Um, before we get started, um, I want you to shout out in the comments where you're viewing from. I love to see um, where you're viewing from and see where we have thank you rhonda for the the uh the two dollar uh super chat i really appreciate that uh rhonda thank you thank you thank you um let's see congratulations on this anniversary You're in chicago cincinnati in the house jessica said she's from virginia um yeah shiny that's what i'm saying i understand shiny said I don't understand. This is free. So how are you not subscribed? <laughs> Y'all really do got commitment issues. I clearly see that. I clearly see that. But uh, listen, I don't know what that's about. Maryland in the house, Atlanta, Virginia, Ohio, uh, Tawanda from Atlanta, Natisha, 
Edwards from Jamaica. How many of y'all joined me on our first retreat in Jamaica? Um, if you did, let me see you drop a number one in the chat. That was our first retreat. Drop a number one in the chat if you joined us. We got Orlando in the house, Long Island, Texas, Nashville, Houston, Michigan, California. Wow, all over Seattle. Grand Prairie, freshly new. It says freshly new from Grand Prairie. Cedar Hill in the building. Uh, some more Jamaican folks. Andrea Anson, shout out to you. Angelica's from Atlanta. Shout out to you, Mississippi in the building. Man, you know what? When I go and do these live events in churches and um, event centers across the country, you know how much it warms my heart when I uh, meet a lot of you guys that I've chatted with through the DMs or seen your comments um, on the YouTube channel and I get a chance to put a face behind the text. We got uh, Tamika from Montego Bay, Mo Bay. Yeah, man, that was extremely fun. We also went to Cabo. If you joined us in Cabo, let me see you drop a number two. Did you go to the healing retreat in Cabo? That was absolutely amazing. We were at the LeBlanc. Uh, LeBlanc. Shout out to I Can't Wait to Travel. Um, Lisa, Alicia, St. Lucia. You know what? That was the trip that I want to plan this year to St. Lucia and can't quite make that happen. Trying to find uh, my travel agent is working on some things to try to make that happen. I want to put together a clarity retreat um, so we can go out there and clear our minds and find out what our purpose is and uh, lean into that. Well, listen, I don't want to um, hold this up. Youngstown, Ohio. Thank y'all for the super chats. I really appreciate y'all. Houston, Texas in the building. Um, Let's see what you said. Uh, Leticia, shout out to you from Frisco, Texas. Um, yeah, wouldn't that be beautiful to go? Um, you said plan something local. Yeah, I, I do. Um, Kimmy, I plan on doing something local. Um, don't know what it is yet, but it's going to be some extremely dope. I want to start bringing to the platform some opportunities for y'all to meet guys. And so, Y'all may have heard me say in January that I'm going to start this initiative called Adam, Where Are You? And I've already began it, seeking out different brothers to, to come out and um, support. I want to do some live dating events. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're going to do some live dating events. I want to play matchmaker with y'all. So um, a lot of you women, let me tell y'all, like when I did the last retreat in Jamaica, it was like 120 something people that came out. Y'all like, where are the guys? We had probably about six guys or something. No, I think it's about eight. It's about eight guys there or whatnot. But um, I know how a lot of y'all be like, I just don't want to be around a bunch of women. And I understand. Listen, I understand. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to figure out how to fix that. You know, how to fix it where you know we can get more men out. And so if y'all have any suggestions, let me know. Please let me know. So uh, we can help fix this because I definitely want these men to come out and support. Yeah, see, a motivated you said, nope, she don't want to be out there with a bunch of women. Says she don't want to do it. Uh, I'll thank you for the birthday. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, but listen, one of the episodes that we had was the first and so far the only episode to hit a million views. and. A lot of times y'all think that I bring guests on the podcast that have uh, big, big followings or whatnot, but I really don't. I bring people who have big stories, people that are going to be transparent, people that are going to be vulnerable, people that have a story that I believe uh, not only touches my life, but will touch the lives of the people. Hold on. There's somebody. What is this? What's KES? What, what is this? Somebody gave. Look at this. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Harriet, I'll show this up here. What's what what what's, what currency is KES? Because I saw five hundred dollars come up here. I said I did, 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 did. they blessed the man of God with five hundred dollars, but now it's KES. I can't find the how you click on that. Can't find it. There it is. Yeah, I can't find. It. I can't click on it. But yeah, uh, Chelsea, thank you so much. Sowing the seed, ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I can't, uh, 
No, it don't be showing me. It's stuff moving so fast. I'm trying to click on. Oh, there it is. Uh, Harriet Baluka. What country are you in, uh, Harriet? What country are you in? Uh, thank you so much for sowing the seed. A uh, hundred dollars. Appreciate you, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Reba, thank you so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. But yeah, as I was saying, so it was an episode that we did that um, got a million views. And that episode was, how many of y'all saw the episode, Is Love Blind? Well, without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, four-year anniversary, live. How y'all doing? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, man, do y'all remember we did the 50K live and we were at Maker's Gym and Tiffany Tiffany came to me. She was like, see all these other people there. They, you know, they have, you know, more views than <laughs> us and they have bigger social media following than us. And, you know, we just finally because y'all just did y'all's episode and y'all felt like y'all just was the, the little the little people on the totem pole. <laughs> But here y'all are. God said what, you know, what was last he'll put first. And so y'all are the only episode that has reached one million views. How y'all feel about that, Martin? It's crazy. Uh, no words. And it's we literally just had this conversation Today. 30 minutes ago. <laughs> just talking about just impact. So it's it's um I don't think I ever get used to it. So. Especially after who you had on the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, why, why, why us? So it's, So let me ask you this. What has happened? Like, are y'all recognized when y'all go out and about? Tell me those experiences. Um, he is. I can kind of walk by myself. Ain't true. It but ain't when true. we are together, it's a it got to be a beeline to him because I'm like, I don't get this when I'm without you, like, so, without you. I'll share one. We was in the airport going to a family reunion, and uh, we getting everybody situated. We just hear somebody yell out of nowhere, damn future wifey. It's like, <laughs> who in here knows about this? Podcast? And my tail looked back. <laughs> <laughs> you looked back. You thought you were going to see him. <laughs> she, 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 she looked. She, <laughs> Look. Well, I see who calling me. It's like, oh, we did just you see him? Did you see him, Tiffany? She saw. I tried. That was black. It was real dark. <laughs> it was real dark. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's um, we get it. We um, it's it's different. But it's it's just we get to meet people and love up on people, and that's all we really wanted to do was just kind of share and. <laughs> Hopefully, bring hope, but just you know, just get to meet people and hug up on them. So, somebody just uh, Kingdom Crafter said, because can't nobody outwife her. Ain't nobody. I need to make that a shirt or something. <laughs> I tell you, you should be women it. walking up telling me that. I'd be like, man, I missed out. What made you say that though? Is that something you've always <laughs> said? It's how I feel. Like, regardless if I was sick or not. Like my life was is was is always will be like dedicated to serving my husband. I just needed everybody to know I might have been sick at the time, but don't try. You are gonna lose if it's gonna be between you and me. It's always gonna be me. <laughs> Tiffany, why are you so confident? Cause I mean I don't, I can't see nothing, so there's no limit. So I might I might as well just shoot. <laughs> Rich, what's wrong with your wife? <laughs> It's been five years. I still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, Rich, what do you say about it when people say that um, the only reason why she chose you is because you basically was the only one around at that time? Because when you shot your shot at her originally, she curbed you. And then, you know, she basically chose you because there was no other option. They wasn't listening. They wasn't listening. I mean, I get it when people hear certain things and it triggers like a, a an emotion and stuff but it's like when you really listen to the whole context she was yeah. sick and yeah. she wasn't trying to bring anybody into that environment 
And so it wasn't like it was a curve just for her, just, you know, thinking she was better than me or something like that. It was a situation she was dealing with that, you know, who comes into that want to be like, oh yeah, bring, let me bring you a part of this, 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 these issues I got going on. So she was yeah. trying to figure that out. And it wasn't until I hit her up much later and then found out the backstory. It was like, oh, so just, just, li- just listen to the whole story. You'll get context. That's Y'all right. didn't listen. I said friends left. I ain't say situations. <laughs> we both let go situations at the time, but you know, people hear what they want to hear. But yeah, what you doing having a situation? Listen, I told you I was very open and clear. Like I have always, I have always been transparent. Listen, you ain't gonna get on me about my situationship, and you got people that won't commit. They shake it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like and subscribe. Go ahead. So, what have y'all done? I know that um, you know we did an update, and for those that didn't uh, get a chance to watch the update, can you update them on what happened when you first came on the podcast? You were looking for a kidney. Did you ever get that kidney, and when did you get it? We did get the kidney. I got it. Actually, I'm coming up on my anniversary. I got in May 17th of 2022. Mm, And I just got a checkup last week and I am doing exceptionally well. So much so that uh, Rich and I are hoping to expand our family one day. Oh, you're trying to get pregnant. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So. We we got healthy kidneys and body parts. So <laughs> she said body parts. What do you think about that, Rich? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. I would. Well, that's something hard. you've been looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. I think um, like cause we ain't used to getting married just to be with us. So, you know, <laughs> of course we would like to start a family, have some kids, and then expand. So. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you said, why not? Why not? Y'all, y'all like, hey, what else? What else we got to do? <laughs> Listen, anything else y'all want to say before I let y'all go? Y'all look amazing. Oh, y'all also got a chance. You got a chance to take Rich where? Lord, we done been on several. Ooh, been on I'm talking about the first trip that y'all went to. Oh, the kidneys. Disney World. Y'all went to Disney World. <laughs> took, a, took a hood kid to Disney World. <laughs> No, that was uh yeah, we've been on up. trips. We're going on a trip next week. Where y'all going? We headed out to Denver. So how did it feel, uh Rich? Has that always been a dream of yours to go to Disney World? Yeah, because you know, as a kid, you didn't get the opportunity because yeah. circumstances, you know, growing up in the hood. Yeah. You know, most we don't, you know, we don't vacation. Vacation is going over to your relative's house who happened to live down south or something like that. Go to their house for the summer. I'm yeah, sure. most of your vacation. Yeah, we we you know trust me. I'm I still haven't been to Disney World, so you know that need to be your next trip with everybody. Your healing trip. <laughs> everybody get their childhood healed and their hearts mm-hmm. healed. All in one. with some comfortable. Put me a trip if everybody just went out to Disney World or Disneyland or something. Went out there and hung out. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be pretty dope. Uh, somebody said, "I love how God demonstrates his." Uh, power in the midst of adversity. Shavilla Martin said that. Um, what up, fam? Asked, did you enjoy Space Mountain at Disney World? Did you get did a chance not. to do that? Did not. We got stuck in Star Wars because somebody <laughs> wanted to go you see, see the it. Shirt? So <laughs> see the shirt? Uh, that's you what we stood outside. You see? you see, I got stuck. Stuck all right. day. <laughs> so. Good, good, Mars. Anything else you'd like to leave the audience with before we let you go? There might possibly be a book. I finished, Finally. I finished <laughs> a book, but it's technology driven and accessibility. It talks about some of our story, but there might be another one um, in the works. It's kind of just looking. Well, I'm not looking for nothing. We just writing it. And just honoring God, and if somebody pick it up, they do. That girl, so I ain't looking for nothing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Tiffany, 
<laughs> Tiffany, um, you remember you said that people be trying to get you to write a book, but you ain't gonna write a book. You remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm still saying about it. I'm not writing it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote what I wanted to write, and that was a uh, on AI and accessibility. Now <laughs> our story, somebody writing that. I ain't doing it. You ain't, you ain't got time. Well, maybe Rich will write it. Yeah. yeah maybe Rich will write it. Uh, I'm in school right now, so I ain't got the time. So he said, "Who in school? You are." Yeah, I'm getting my master's right now. Go ahead and get it. A master's in what? Uh, an MBA in cybersecurity. Hmm. In cyber. Go ahead and get them checks. Go ahead and get some checks. I'm proud of you, man. Go make it do what it do. But listen, y'all, thank y'all so much for stopping by, hollering at us. Uh, really, really appreciate y'all. Uh, y'all look amazing. Love looks good on y'all. Thank y'all for giving people hope in the midst of adversity. Um, a lot of people. I had, uh, matter of fact, I released that episode today. I released the episode today from, uh, it was a singles panel in Bermuda. And it was a lady who was blind on that episode. And she said when she saw the, when she, <laughs> when she, when she, we got you. When she, she felt it in the spirit, she saw it in the spirit. Keep yeah, going. Keep I going. said that too. She said, I saw it. I said, Did you really? She said, I did. I said, Okay. Did but she's saying, so argue with you. But she, when she uh, consumed your episode, <laughs> She said you gave her so much hope. Now, let me tell you her story. Her story, which people get a chance to watch, because I released the episode, to, you know, what, 30 minutes before this uh, this uh, live started. Her husband left her with five kids after she lost her sight. Oh and my so gosh. with five kids, she was a stay-at-home mom and had nothing. And her husband walked out on her. Can we and beat she him went up? back to school. Uh, Hell built yeah. her life back up. Heck I don't yeah. want to ruin the story for y'all, but she watched the episode. I just got to say it. She watched the episode of y'all and it gave her hope that she could find love, even in the midst of uh, her adversity of not being able to see. And she's a brilliant woman. And I'm she so said, you your episode gave her so much encouragement. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so much, so much encouragement. You gotta watch that one. I'm so glad you said that because I just asked, just had the conversation with one of my closest friends, uh, Shardell, talking about I don't know if if we have any if I have any impact if we have any impact. So to hear oh. that, I'm just kind of like blown away. And I love I would love to meet her yeah. and her kids, but I just I appreciate that. That just that does everything for me. This is this the day right there. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm, I'm connect y'all because she's 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 a, she's amazing. She's a a therapist. Like she is absolutely amazing, and she's she works uh, bi coastal from New York and uh, Bermuda. But the lady is brilliant, and when you uh, listen to the episode, you'll be like, wow. So I'm gonna connect y'all. It'll be an amazing thing. Anyway, thank y'all so much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate y'all. And y'all go and enjoy y'all evening. Y'all be blessed, Martin. Y'all give it up for me, y'all. Man, that was so, so dope. I'm going to go ahead and bring up this amazing couple. I absolutely love this couple. The Whitlows. Go and take, you can take the water. You can go and drink your water. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to lie. I'm going to drink. There it is. There it is. So ah. just, now, Jewel, <clears throat> originally, <throat> was like man i don't know about doing this i don't know about coming on the podcast with my wife uh, i kind of <laughs> slipped y'all at the very beginning i talked to y'all independent of each other uh Tavia was always down um she was like hey i want to be on the dear future wifey podcast she said that in 2020 when i first launched it and i said when the right season come it'll happen and i never knew that it would come at a part uh at a point that y'all were um y'all's marriage is falling apart so how are y'all doing today? Good. We're doing, good. We're doing really, really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're in a good space. So, so put and text, put context space. around good. Oh, we're in a great <laughs> space. <laughs> I, I said it. <laughs> so when you look back, what year was that that things seemed to be falling apart? All of them. I mean, no. Uh, <laughs> 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 up, 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 up was until uh, what was it? Twenty. 21? Yeah, so we did the we did yeah. the episode in 2021. Uh, we started 
uh, separating in 2021 and you yeah. called us like right when we started back communicating yeah like we just had like had a small conversation so like we was like separated then you ran into me at costco <laughs> and i gave you them seaweed snacks he was like i don't even like these jokers but you would just <laughs> you tried them anyway i might add for the record i ain't like them either so <laughs> <laughs> but listen i was going there to actually try those snacks I mean, how divine God is. I said, I want to try that. I want to try to eat healthier or whatnot. And then I ran, I've never ran into you out and about, you know, <clears throat> you know, just casually, unless there's an event, of course. But right. uh, we we live by each other, but I never ran into you. And yeah. then literally the week before, uh, Tavia was doing a photo shoot for a friend of mine. And she was like, yeah, I said, how things going? She was like, you need to talk to your boy. <laughs> I said, what? Tom, oh. yeah, he want a divorce. I said, no, he don't. No, what? <laughs> but I heard Tavia speak in a way I've never heard her speak before. And she was saying that she basically was praying and interceding for her marriage to stay together. You know, and I was just so surprised by that. Tavia, what made you take that stance instead of being like, well, forget you. If you don't want me, then I'm fine. I'll go find somebody else. Why, why did you that. take that stance? <laughs> she said that. Um, what <laughs> <laughs> she said that? Oh, she said that to me. <laughs> uh, well, you know, to be you know very clear, because I remember when we did the episode and I saw a lot of the comments that they were basically like, "Oh yeah, he don't want her. She needs to leave. I wouldn't be begging to let nobody stay with me." And it and I was like, I just need to be clear, just as unhappy as he was with me, I was unhappy with him. Yeah, However, I did not want to leave the marriage without consulting with God. And I needed to know what God wanted me to do. And to be very honest with you, God gave me an option. And he said that you if he because he was the one that wanted the divorce. So if he's gonna divorce you, you good, mm, you yeah. know. However, what if if you think if if I don't believe that my husband was going to be good because God kind of showed me some things, what are you going to do as a woman of God? What are you going to do? Are you going to just be good on your own because I said you was going to be good? Or are you going to do what I would like for you to do? And that is pray for your husband. Yeah. And I did that. I was praying for the marriage at first. And then God told me, stop praying for the marriage. Marriage is good. I need you to pray for him. And that's what I started doing. I just started praying for him. And it was all in secret the entire time. And when I tell you the things that I prayed, I see in my husband right now. Like Talk I about see it. It. Say, I want you to put reference around it. You see what? What have you seen God do? Just his his patience, his understanding, his, you know, one th one gripe that he always used to have with me was the way that I worked. As if, oh, you just working because you're just trying to show out. You just want people to see you. You you know, he never saw that this was <laughs> an anointing that God had given me, that blessed me with, you know. But now he sees it. He He's my partner. And one thing, let me tell you something. <laughs> one oh. thing that is so cool about us now is that we we talk about it. But however we feel, we tell each other. Good. We're not internalizing it anymore. Good. So one time we were having <laughs> yeah. uh, an event and he was acting up. Yeah, I'm telling you, he was acting oh, up. Man. Yes. When we had that first event at the space, he was acting up. Oh, I said, let me holler at you. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to the side. I said, listen, I don't know what you got going on today, <clears throat> but today I need you on my team. We a team. We Good. can't do this today. We cannot fall apart. <laughs> I need you right now to be on my team. And when I say my my boy fell right in line, and he did, he he was like, "All right, you you right, fell right in line," and we made that event happen as a team. So, and Jewel, Jewel, what made you what made you do that? What made you acquiesce to her request? Um, I don't remember exactly. I've slept since then, but um, <laughs> no, seriously, I think that. So back to when we reconciled and just the whole cleansing of our emotional and mental space um we became friends in that and so yeah. once that happened um we were able to connect on a deeper level right and so 
I think now she's probably she can pull me off the uh, off the off my soapbox if I'm on the soapbox, yeah. and so she's probably one of the only ones that can. And that's why I would acquiesce because now I trust her. Before I didn't, and so yeah. she's got my heart now, where she had mm. a piece of it before, not my entire heart. So, and the same for me, you know, with her, I have her heart, I always did, but. I treasure her heart now and I, I keep her covered. I didn't, and oddly enough, I didn't say that before in the first episode because I was like, what we doing? I don't know what we're talking about. But um, <laughs> I never uncovered her, even though I wanted out of the marriage, I never uncovered her throughout that process. So, another thing that transpired that is such a testimony to the goodness of God, you gave your life to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. What made you do that, Jewel? Um, you know, I had been kind of in and out and I, I, oddly enough, God had set me down throughout our, <laughs> our, uh, situation. He said, come here, man, let me go on, sit, sit down. You're doing too much. And I was like, what? No, who's not talking? <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, cause I'm now see what had happened was, and I'm trying to explain. And he just talked to me how I need to be talked to him. He was like, come, come on, sit down right here, Mike. And I'm gonna need you to just chill out. For a minute, I need to work on both of y'all. It ain't all her fault. You got something to play in it too, and so um, it just happened, you know, um, throughout time. And I, oddly enough, the people that he sent in between there and yeah. that had the message, you know, to yeah. for us to. to and not and, and not only that, he old child like. Child, oh, you ain't got oh, time to be trying to be getting in the oh, new relationship. This what we doing. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get in a new relationship. I said, bro, you uh -uh. should have did that like 30 First years ago. <laughs> oh, girl. Child. I got me a young old lady. <laughs> <laughs> a young old lady. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about I'm old. I'm old? Child. See, see, see. I'm see just I'm saying, who? I'm just saying, who's starting over at this age? That's all I'm saying. Like, bro, get it together. Come yeah. on. Somebody said, not old, sis. He just seasoned. <laughs> y'all see, see that I'm right seasoned. there? Yeah, man. <laughs> and this, y'all see this? It's because of her. That's what I'm listening And all, all my the daughters, stress. they did this to me. All the stress. <laughs> yes. I deal with five women, man. I ain't got time for nobody else. You sure do. You got a house full of, well, you got a house full of women. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, but listen, I don't even want you to apologize for what you said earlier, where you say that, um, you know, people thinking that he was done and all this type of stuff. Y'all are both checked out or whatever. Why can't we normalize fighting for marriage? Why does it have to be some type of ego thing to be like, well, I wasn't. I No, it's a covenant for a reason. You should fight for it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's so beautiful about it is that we say these beautiful vows, but we don't have the fight for it. You know, it'd be like, well, if you want to leave me, then leave me. Really? This ain't a boyfriend. This is legacy. If we allow the devil, because we got to understand who we're wrestling against. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and high places. So if we literally take the mindset of just because my spouse is having a bad season, whether it's a year, two years, five years, I've heard. Uh, Michelle Obama said that she couldn't stand Barack for 10 years, for 10 yeah. years. That's a long time. I don't wish that on nobody, but for 10 years, that's an honest moment. But what that says to me, when I hear that, that can sound very uh, discouraging to say, gosh, how can you share space with somebody for 10 years uh, that you don't like? But it also says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And so that morning came, they became presents. I don't know what, when them 10 years started and ended, but you talk about this couple who sat in the highest seat in, in office in the whole United States because Barack couldn't have done that without Michelle. Michelle wouldn't be who she was without Barack. And so if we understand the value of each other, then we're able to weather those storms and go through that for better or for worse moment. And so that's why I had y'all come during the marriage vow series is because in real time, y'all were going through something. And um, what was that, Pro that 20 year, y'all 25, y'all approaching year yeah. 25. Yeah. 25. Yeah, yeah, we were in year 24 <laughs> when we did the podcast. And you said on the show, I believe that y'all are gonna celebrate 25 years and I'm gonna be there to document it. Let me and tell you, you something about document the 20 year. And let yep, me tell y'all yep. something about how beautiful y'all are to me. Yep, I'm not going to cry. 
but y'all are so beautiful to me because when I talk to Jewel, Jewel, Jewel loves you. Like, like it's hard to find men that stay because unfortunately the convenient part is to leave. Um, and we hear too many examples of that, but for Jewel to be able to stay, you know, and I can give you credit for staying too, but I just want to talk about men because so many households are growing up with absentee fathers. Um, and he don't have no kids in the no more. You know, the kids got grown and most people say once these kids get out the house, I'm getting out the house too, basically. But what I love when I see y'all is that the purpose that you have, you're such a talented, not only makeup artist, but a photographer. I even forgot that you do makeup now because you, you've been killing this so much on photography that I was like, oh, I forgot you do makeup, you know, and that's what's so great about uh, the seasons that we go through and to continue to reinvent ourselves. But what I saw in you guys is two couples that genuinely loved each other, you know, and y'all go through those moments. Like when I document the 20 year anniversary, um, y'all's 20, you know, 20 year vow renewal is what y'all had because yeah. y'all never had a formal wedding. So y'all said, let's go and have it, have it now. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I saw was two people that genuinely loved each other. And that's what blessed my heart. Another thing, it was the only episode still to this very date that I interceded for. Because after I had a conversation with you, Tavia, and then I ran into Jewel, and I said, God, this is this is you. How did I run into this at the same time? Because you didn't have to share that with me. It takes people to be vulnerable. You share that with me, Tavia. And then Jewel, I walked up, Jewel, how are things with you and uh, Tavia? Oh, everything cool. I said, everything cool. Oh, yeah, everything cool. I said, everything cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything cool. I said, everything, you everything cool. You must have talked to Tavia. He said, you must have talked to Tavia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, cool. that's what dudes will do. They'll sit there and just be lying, <laughs> oh, right? Just lying. Like, dude, break his leg, leg hanging off. Yeah, right? no, I mean this leg. All right, I'm just gonna put a bandaid. Yeah, leg yeah. is whatever. It's hanging. Some ice off. on it. Be all right. <laughs> yeah, put some ice on it. Be all right. Your leg is falling off, bro. But that's what right. men do. And so yeah. I just thank Jewel for trusting me with the space um, to even, um, which was so profound. Jewel said, "I'll go to counseling." but you got to pick the therapist for us. Yes, for a man to yes. trust another man like that, the Bible says yes. iron sharpens iron. So for yes. him to say that and do that, it's an honor because what I did, I literally the day, hour, the hour before y'all came in, I was in the shower and I laid down on my face and I just cried before the Lord. I said, God, I went through a divorce. I know that you are transforming my pain into a platform. I want to bombard the gates of hell so no demon in hell can destroy this marriage. I see it. This is not ignorance. This is not me being oblivious to the real situations that y'all are going through. It was yeah. the voice of God saying, no weapon formed against y'all shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against y'all shall be condemned for this is y'all inheritance because y'all are servants of God. And so um, I love the fact that you war roomed him. You literally went and you started yeah. praying against every demon that was trying to destroy him. And yeah. that's what marriage is about, because it's going to be a season that you may be weak in the moment and frustrated or sad or going through menopause or whatever you may be going through. And then, yeah, that's what happens. I know. And then he begins to pray for you and begins to intercede for you when you moody and tripping and acting irritable. He'd be like, baby, I, I don't, he don't take it personally. But I thank y'all so much. What y'all got coming up? Tell, tell the audience y'all got something coming up, how people can support you. And um, before I bring up my next guest. Well, uh, one thing that I just, you know, want to say, um, the way that everyone, um, you know, told us how we touched them yeah. or and how they prayed for us. And I've even had women to reach out to me asking me, you know, how did I stay so strong? And they needed me to help them to stay strong and pray for their marriage. Yes. And I, I just was amazed at that, you know, because I, I wouldn't have never thought that I would have had the strength to endure that time that Jewel and I went through because it was hard and I would never, it made me look at divorce differently because, you know, you hear about people getting divorced all the time, but when it's not happening to you, you just, Oh my God, I hate to hear that. But when you're experiencing it, it is like death without burial. 
<laughs> you know, it's just that that dead person just walking around, and <laughs> you you just have these emotional days. And and one thing that I appreciate about him now is like it was maybe about a month or so ago. Um, he uh, yelled at me, right? And I yelled right back. But then the next day, he literally walks over to me and apologizes. And he said, you know, I didn't mean to yell at you. I'm so sorry. My husband wouldn't have never done that, you know, five years ago. That was not his thing. So it just shows me how real God is. And every day that we don't even argue. Like I keep, I'm telling y'all real talk. Since we've reconciled, Jewel and I may have had maybe two disagreements and it's not even really been, it wasn't really an argument. And wow. and once we figured out we were disagreeing, you know, we fixed it. So it's just been amazing. We're, we, um, the one thing that we do have together is, you know, we have a new studio space that we are um, turning into a creative space that we are hoping that other creatives and photographers will book the space yeah. and become creative, you know, in our space. So we're doing that together. The name of the uh, space is 97 Inc., every, uh, 97 Pictures. And everybody always asks me what 97 means. It's a, a significant number. It is the yeah. year that we got yeah. married. Yeah. So uh, that's what yeah. 97 means. So it's a it's a very yeah. deep number. For me. Yeah, it's got meaning behind it. Yeah. And it goes with, you know, us being, staying the course, and you know, you, we were on the marriage vow series, for better or for worse. And and I think I said in the in the on there, you know, you marry when you get married, you're marrying the covenant, and right. And so you have to be obedient. And so, you know, that comes into okay. Uh, I, I might not like her, but if I'm <laughs> if I'm being, if I understand my vows and what I took and what I said, and a lot of people don't then I, I have to battle through and I have to, I'll have to endure because if God said no, then I can't go. You know what I mean? Right. It's, a, it's his will, not mine, but you have to mature emotionally and spiritually for that. And so I think that in our journey, I matured emotionally and spiritually more. And so we're different because we're in a different space. Our old relationship, we had to bury and, and, and get out get of it. Out. Yeah. And so, and to build a new. So with with that, you know, we want to thank everybody for praying for us, watching the episode, making, you know. People uh, still hitting us watching. up today. I've been stopped out yeah. and about, hey man, I saw you on there. My brothers, and they asked me, man, what you said really, you know, some of what you said yeah. really touched me. And I've talked to several brothers in the gym, you know, and just, you know, conversated with brothers to give them some encouragement and, you know, to seek therapy or whatever it is they needed, you know, from a from a male perspective, because Latarius, you know, we don't have that. And so, it's 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 like you said for me to trust you i saw you know god put you in my life to say hey you can trust him and i sent him and i saw it and that's why i was open to you and yeah. that's that's not that's uncommon for us man and that's but, why i said i didn't take that lightly that's why i yeah. said i didn't take that moment lightly i took it as an honor especially knowing my past and knowing how i fumbled my marriage and i said god thank you i look for do-overs in my life i look for people that i can sow into to say hey listen i didn't get it right but i know i wish i had i became that which i wish i had in that moment yeah. So i yeah. said right, i'm gonna go ahead and be and i can see it so god has given me the ability to see uh pain and other brothers to be like come here let's talk you know ah, everything fine no it's not it's not fine right you know, right right Thank you so thank much. You, we, we thank you. We you, really man. do appreciate yeah. you. Uh, we absolutely love you, adore you. Like, absolutely. I mean, I know you got to get to the next guest, but listen, I'd be proud to let people know that's my friend. Yeah, so, right. so yeah, <laughs> right I, I, I do yeah. a little name drop here and there, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. And everybody <laughs> needs to know that that new picture that you are floating around uh -oh. that I took it. Yes, sure I did. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she took that picture with the on, on the with the black jacket on, with the black uh, tuxedo jacket, with the the the, the rhinestone diamonds, whatever the heck that's on the crystal. Yeah, all yeah, on yeah. It. all yeah. that just yeah. you know, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I love it, and we love you, and thank you so much forever. Yeah. You are brother forever. Yeah. Thank you. Always, forever. always. And all, your, all the viewers, stop shacking up if you shacking, and go on and hit the subscribe button. Tell all your <laughs> right. friends. We just hit two thousand. We just hit two thousand uh, viewers. There's two thousands on uh, two thousand viewers on right now. So that's awesome. Thank you. We, awesome. We're not thank gonna take you. them no more of your time. You got to get to the other people. But thank sure. you so much. Yeah. Thank y'all. Y'all enjoy y'all evening. Y'all be blessed. Thank
All right, so listen, now this guest right here, I want y'all to, you know, give him grace. Uh, he had the most, well, one of the, the second to the most controversial episode. Um, no, it's not Derek Jackson. That would be the first controversial. But uh, this brother, I thank him for being, um, for just being bold. Um, when his wife reached out to me, matter of fact, I'm just going to bring him on. Y'all going to recognize his face. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, Vincent McIntosh. Y'all remember him? So this was the episode that we had where his <clears throat> wife reached out to me and they both reached out to me. Well, she reached out to me first and said, um, I want to find out who you are because my husband is watching the Dear Future Wifey podcast. And why is he looking for a future wifey? And uh, <laughs> And he already has a wife. I said, well, that's not quite what the podcast is about it's not like he's looking for a future wifey and then um she said i just want to reach out to you and then we began to talk and she said that they were they have decided to file for divorce but um they live in a small town and they wanted to come on the podcast to announce it to the world so they don't have to keep reliving their story um how you doing vincent i'm doing good can't complain so Amazing. where are y'all where are y'all at now? That happened in what 2021? Yeah, 2021. Uh, right now we just co-parenting and you know communicating about the kids and that's it. Um she she lives she's doing her thing, I'm doing my thing. Um so um are are y'all on good terms right now? We're good terms for the kids. So y'all y'all just basically time. strictly co-parents co-parenting yes sir have y'all has a divorce been finalized it's still the paperwork we, we filed for uh paperwork is going through i know it's been a long time but it was a lot of obstacles um uh, far as you know this single thing i had to adapt to that uh, <laughs> i had to adapt to being single first yeah. um managing finances trying to work trying to you know um upkeep a apartment do all those things um but yeah we we finalized the papers just sending them papers off and getting it done so how did you feel coming on the podcast? What 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 did you hear afterwards? What did your friends and family members say? Give me an update on what happened afterwards. <clears throat> um when after we did the the podcast, we kind of had to announce it before it got aired on that Wednesday. And it was kind of like, you know, the family was her family pretty much was like, why you didn't come to us and let us know? you know, before you, you know, went out. My whole thing was I was trying to go on a show to really like tell my side of who I am and how did we get here? And it seemed like it kind of, it didn't work out for me in that way. Cause I, I watched all your shows and I was like, well, I'm prepared for this. And you know, he's going to make me a homie. He's going to say, you know, this is my new homie. And actually I thought she was going to go with the, you know, the following questions far as saying, you know, how did you guys meet? And what made you, you know, attracted to her or try to post, but it didn't go that way. You just went on in straight cut and raw. And I was like, whoa, hold up. I wasn't even ready for that. So well, I what was happened like, was yeah. what she said leading into it. She started off. So I never prepare for the interview. I never try to figure out what questions I'm going to ask, what not. But she started leading into stuff saying, and I feel like you um, pretty much preyed on her that, you were trying to get her and win over and all the stuff that you had very ill motives, which I said on the podcast, I didn't believe you did. You know, even when people come in, they say, well, he's a narcissist. He's this or whatever. I didn't get that from to be honest with you. I believe that you had some toxic traits as well as she did, because what I also recognized that from her, which I told her, we talked offline, is that I was saying, like, listen, even the way that. um she felt like she had this superiority complex where she like was, and you, you literally supported that where she hears some guys, she knows guys, you don't know nothing about God type of situation. And you was like, yeah, yeah, she hears God. I don't hear. And it's like, and then she, I watched her, what was considered, what I looked at it as spiritual abuse. It's like where somebody, you have a spouse that operates like that. And so I started hearing a lot of stuff like that. And even when I talked to her offline, I was like, hold on. And even some stuff that the family came around and supported you. Um, talk on that. Her family came around and supported you, right? Her yeah, father. They, uh, yeah, after after everything went down, they just said that, um, you know, 
if any help you need, we are here in your corner. And that kind of gave me some relief because that's really where I was trying to go at anyway, because I'm not no, I didn't plan to get married to get divorced. Right. I planned to be with her all the way to the end. But, you know, when certain situations occurred and we was, we got into it years ago and I, I could be honest, God kept us together. Um, but then when the pandemic came, it kind of exposed some things on that we were riding on some fumes of God and we weren't going to church because remember they, they kind of canceled out church. You yeah. couldn't gather, you couldn't do a gathering, only a certain amount of people yeah. was in could be in one place. So that kind of yeah. exposed um the, the trueness be up behind it. Like it wasn't no foundation after that. So yeah. that's how it first started. And then we started, you know, a lot of other things, incidents occurred, and I still tried to help my work on myself in the process of that to better myself for the marriage to get better. But eventually that didn't happen. Um, it just took a, you know, a, a different turn. Um, what, I still what do you care about her. What do you think when people, when you read the negative comments, how did you take that in and how did you feel about that? I'm gonna be honest. I try, uh, when it first aired and I kind of read a little bit, it kind of got to me. Remember when I made that phone call to you? And then yeah. I was like, yeah, I felt like I had to redeem myself. So I was like, I want to go on a podcast and yeah. kind of, you know, prove my point. And then I text you and say, you know what? I'm going to let her take this win. And you said, you told me, you know, that's a good move, my brother. You know, I respect you on that. Yeah. So now um, I watched it again. At first, I didn't want to watch it. I watched it again and I pinpoint how I was, how I felt in the midst of that. And to be honest with you, I wasn't in my right mind at the time. Um, I was, you know, drinking, doing drugs at the time. So I wasn't really there mentally and spiritually prepared for the podcast. Um, and now I can say today, um, I'm in my right mind. I'm I'm doing good. I'm 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 healed. I'm pretty I'm working on more things. Um, I realized that I, I need to communicate more and I need to learn how to care about people's emotions and feelings before me, before myself, put people first. And um, and learn how to love, learn how to love, and know how to communicate. One thing about relationships, you have to communicate. Um, you can't you can't think, you can't assume. You have to communicate. And if you have an issue, you address that issue right then and there. And instead of holding it back and letting it build up, and then you lash out. Um, yeah. And yeah, you can't do that. I was asking you. Uh, well, first of all, so when you came on the podcast, was you high? You say you was on no, the road. No, 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 no. I went high on the podcast. <laughs> okay. I'm like, good Lord. No, no. What I, I was saying was like during that moment, because I didn't, I couldn't understand. I couldn't really, um, how could I say it? I couldn't adapt to this newness. Right. Um, so I was confused in my mind. I was, you know, going left and right in my mind, trying to see God, trying to figure it out what was going to happen. And cause this was a new place being married for 12 years. And now you have to move out. Now you have to start in life, be on your own. It was my first time being on my own and, and having my own apartment. Um, that's that's a lot. Like, and, you know, no, you can't call on family. You have to figure it out. And that 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 dealt with it. That was kind of like overwhelming. It was like an anxiety upon me at that time. Did you uh, did you continue to take my advice and not date while you're going through a divorce? Um, I'm going to say no. Um, I'm going to say no. Yeah. So, <laughs> so say you, no. Do, do you feel, a, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Does that make it easier or harder? Because you know, experience is the best teacher. So as you've been dating, do you feel like that's been helpful or hurtful? It has been helpful and it showed me though these streets ain't nice. These streets, it's different. It's different. And then you meet you meet all different type of women and and I have I have dated women that saw me on the show. They show they they recognize me on the show. Um, but they, they felt like I didn't do, I didn't get my justice on the show. So it, it, it was positive. Um, but the, the, them, them dating streets are rough. Uh, well, well, when well. you look at that and you say they're rough and take this moment, what do you feel like you had in your wife that was lost that you didn't value before, but now you value after being out in these dating streets, if anything? Um, one thing I can say is I, I value her as a praying woman. Um, I kind of, you know, when we were going through the separation and stuff like that and leading to the divorce, um, I kind of like had some resentment against Christian women. 
Um, I was like, I'm not messing with no Christian woman. I'm gonna, you know, not mess with nobody that's a heathen or nothing like that, yeah. but mess with somebody that has some kind of spiritual, but still talk about God. I ain't talking about nobody with crystals or anything like that. Yeah. But somebody somebody that just, you know, and that still ain't work out. So I, you know, it, it just it's nothing like having somebody that just have the word of God and that's really trust and believe in God and the praying woman. Um, and, and it's hard to come by them. Um hard to come by those type of women that's good that's good a lot of people said you 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 sound better you look better they said you sound more confident uh before i let you go speak on that real quick why do you feel like they see you being more confident versus when you showed up on the show the lack of confidence that that it showed what changed um pretty much just healing myself like looking within myself and finding out that um i needed to work on communication and stop comparing myself to other people. Um, find a value within yourself. Don't look for someone to value you. You value yourself because God created everybody in their own way. And God, when God shed light on you being as good as good enough for Him, then no any anything anybody else says doesn't matter. Right. And so once once I saw that, and I had time alone, time time alone, and reading books and doing research online, doing that self healing. Um, it, it, it expose some things into you to what you need to work on. And long as you put the work in, then you get, you, you get the best, the better income, the better outcome in the situation. Yeah. Well, good. Listen, you know, I'm, I'm fully in support of you. Uh, I like it when a man is able to be transparent and vulnerable. Um, I'm sorry that you felt attacked when you came on the podcast. That wasn't my, my purpose. It was literally iron sharpening iron. And anytime you hear that, you're going to, if you get two pieces of metal rubbing against each other, you're going to see some friction. You're going to see some sparks. You're going to hear a rubbing and scratching noise against each other. And so what I was listening to in you was trying to divert you from making the 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 decision that i made if there was still hope if there was still hope in y'all marriage then i want to you know give you some tough love and say hey listen listen to this moment um if this if there's still a hope of reconciliation and y'all both are willing to walk through it then um then do that but if not then you know i i don't i don't look at divorce as being the end of your life you know what i'm saying um sometimes i believe that divorce is the wisest decision couples can make when they have met an impasse and they're causing too much da uh, damage to themselves and each other, as well as to their kids, because y'all have kids that are watching y'all go through whatever y'all go through. But when she got on the podcast and what we talked originally, you know, it was healthy. Y'all had a very healthy moment uh, in y'all's marriage. The first time y'all were actually talking and communicating, and it was great. Um, even before y'all came on the podcast, y'all just went on a trip together. Uh, that she did for you on your birthday just to say hey we just gonna go here as friends since the marriage is over and so people didn't get a chance to see that healthiness that y'all were operating in it's just that when it came on the podcast it turned a different way but again vincent i love you man i appreciate you thank you for being a man and standing 10 toes down in your truth and in vulnerability and allowing people to see what it looks like in the midst of the fire and the midst of the storm and yes, um, i pray that restoration continues on your side and that God continues to get the glory in your life and God continues to restore and heal prevail you and um, and God get the glory for that. So thank you so much. Thank you. I will be back on your show, though. All right. What are you going to talking about? <laughs> new boo or something? You'll get a new boo and come on there. They're going to be new boo, but it's also going to be helping men, to, you know, to expose that, you know, themselves to get better for that, that new person that coming in life. So we're well, good. I think, you, I think your thing froze up, whatever. But good. Thank you so much, Vincent. I want you to be thank blessed you. now. All right, bye. All right, I'm gonna bring up uh, my boy Marcus Wiley. Then I'm gonna bring up Sandy Sam and David Burst. Uh, Marcus D. Wiley. Man, what's up? What you doing with your life? Right now, I'm watching the WNBA draft. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. My wife just fixed. Let me rephrase that. Just cooked a fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic dinner. And now, yeah, I'm glad you brought me in because I'm ready to lay down. I'm ready to lay down. Yeah, ready I'm, lay down. To lay down. 
I really so Marcus, you came on the podcast twice. Uh, what was your experience? What what you know, you'll call me from time to time and be like, Man, I was at the airport and somebody came up to me and did this. So share uh what I call the dear future wifey effect. What has happened since you've been on the podcast? Well, let's start from when we met. We were at uh this church in Plano, I think one church. Yeah, one community. conference. And when you was like, uh, hey man, I want to get you on the on the podcast, and I was like, Yeah, okay. Because you know, you hear this all the time, like. Everybody wants you on the podcast. You be like, okay, here go another podcast. And so I didn't even do any research on you. I didn't even like go find it or nothing, you know, because yeah. I'm so old school. I just like, oh, we, we exchange numbers. I said, next time I'm in Dallas, I call you. Yep. So I called. We did the first one. I think that was uh your either second or third season, whatever. And uh, ever since then, bro, I I got a whole new audience. It's people that don't even know I'm a comedian. Listen, I be doing comedy shows, and they come up to me after the show. Man, I saw you on Dear Future Wifey. I ain't even know you was a comedian. Man, you was real good on that. I be like, well, you wasn't listening, obviously. You wasn't listening. Yeah, so it's been good, man. Just, you know, it's been a blessing. Real talking to tears to me because, uh, you know, like I said, man, just people who didn't even know about Marcus D. Wiley, you know, uh, you know, they know about me now. Your platform uh created a nice, nice boost for a brother. Yeah, man. That's got it. Appreciate it. Yeah. I love how not only are you comedic, but you be dropping gems. You know what I'm saying? And you have many years of marriage under your belt yeah. and a ton of experience. And so what I love about you is that as you was making us laugh, you while the mouth is open, you Throw something in there real quick and be like, oh, I just I took some medicine real quick. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I I love that. Um India Harrison said he's just as deep as he is funny. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um it's Appreciate like it. Marcus the funny Wiley. This was yeah. <laughs> my, my, my brand manager, Sherilyn Smith said, shout out to Sherilyn. How are you doing, Queen? But um, yeah, it's 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 dope. Um, so, so what are some other things when you look back, what, what'd your wife say when she saw you on the podcast? Oh, she enjoyed it. You know, my wife, she's the one who everybody's like, we want to, we want to meet your wife. We want to hear what she got to say. And I say, stop being messy. Um, we have got a good thing going on. <laughs> it's, it's been going on for 27 years. She's not tied up in the basement. Uh, she just walked out. As soon as you said you bring a mark while on, she shot right out the room. She got is I don't I don't know if she's ashamed of me. Uh I don't know if she really just don't want to be next to me. But uh but 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 you know, we um you know things are good. And let me tell you what's funny. She's finally accepted to go do a panel with me, a marriage panel. Watch well, yes. in October. Good. Now I had to sell it to her. I had to tell her, look here, this is like a vacay. We're gonna use the church's money. We're gonna be up, we're gonna go on vacation on them, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I set it up real good. And then uh, I said, but he got my wife. She said, do you think we're going to still be together in October? And I said, you know what? That You know what? I got to put this on stage because these churches are very arrogant to just, they really step out on faith, just thinking. You mean you're going to book my ticket in February, hoping my marriage still together in October? In 2024? When I'm just seeing all these people talking about they marriage and, and how to is urine in the dating pool and I mean just I think talking about badly or something. <laughs> I hope we stay together because we need that vacation in October. But boy, that's a long we're a long way from that. What'd you say? Ooh. Black love is day by day. Is day you know black love is day to day. And today a good day. She cooked. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We might I might see if I can do a little something tonight. I might. I don't know. You might, I you might. might. <laughs> I might. Yeah, hey, ain't no guarantee. But yeah, man, I said, I, when she said that, I was like, that's that's crazy that they be booking married couples months and months away. They really believe in God. I mean, that's a that's far. That's 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 far. So, Marcus, why your wife say that to you though? Man, because we because she's a jokester too. She just don't do it, you know, publicly. But oh, she got all type of jabs for me privately, and you know. She was just saying that because when I called her to sell it to her, shit, that's what she said. She said, so, do you think we're still going to be together in October? 
I was like, unless you got somebody you ain't told me about, unless you're not ready to start <laughs> some paperwork or something. I don't know. I mean, you know, don't don't leave me in the dark, though. Put me in the loop. Let me know what's up. <laughs> Let me know what's up. What's Margaret. the deal, shouty? Mar Margaret up? said, you said you're going to try to do a little something, something tonight. I might, because she cooked. Man, I ain't going to lie. She cooked. She fixed something at the house. See, I'm not, I ain't the real man of the house. My, my wife is. She's the man of the house. And what I mean by that is she, she should know how to fit, man. She's good. She know how to do stuff. So she went to work. She cooked. She repaired something. So she deserved it. Who sang that? JJ Harrison. She deserved it. Yeah, she deserved it. So I'm going to try to give her the best seven to 11 minutes I can give her. Martin, 7 11 yeah, yeah, when you've been married, when you've been married for 27 years, I mean, how long do you want to do it at this point? I mean, we already know what we're working with. We're not discovering nothing. I'm not auditioning, Emma. It's not a competition. I mean, let's just get to it and go and go to sleep. That's what I'm saying. You think you're not auditioning? I hope I'm not auditioning. <laughs> I mean. That'll be a terrible thing to find out now. Ooh, I, don't, I don't know if my heart can even can even handle that. I, I'm auditioning, and we've been together for 27 years. You mean to tell me I ain't got the job yet? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's terrible. That'd be terrible. He said I ain't got the job yet. I ain't got oh, the job God. yet. But yeah, oh, man, man, it's been good. It's been good. And um, you got any tours you know, coming up? Say it again. Got any tours coming up? Actually, I'm on tour right now with Ali Sadiq. Yes. Uh, See, I'm, I'm on still tour. Going on. All right. Yeah, that tour's still going on, man. It's pretty much all year. I gave the churches a break. You know, I did a tour last year, marriage yep. is major surgery. Yep. And uh, and so it's been good. Good. I've been good. enjoying it. So um, how can people support that? Go to the website and find out your next tour date. Yeah, uh, you go to my site, MarcusDWallet.com. You know, like I say, I'm with Ali right now pretty much for the whole year. I got some spot dates that I was already booked on, but uh, he got a 100-city tour, 100 dates. And so to I already know I got 100 paid dates, You good. God is in the blessing business. I, <laughs> he's giving me back everything I lost in the pandemic. <laughs> in the pandemic. 100 so, dates. Yeah, you got 100 dates. So the first half is over uh, in June. We go through June. We off July. Then it picks back up August all the way through December. Yeah. And so unless another pandemic come, I'm in good shape. <laughs> I mean, I'm in good shape. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I'm yeah. doing I'm doing the math. I said, if you got a minimum of this, you, you walk away from at least a half a million. You Come know, on, the tears. Don't, don't count. Don't count my money. I gotta don't, count your money. I wouldn't be a boy if I didn't count it. I wouldn't. I would do I wouldn't be a boy. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do yeah. it. I'm gonna do it because I I may need you to send me some ties and some offers or something. <laughs> <laughs> you said God is good, ain't he? Uh -huh. He sure oh, is. God. I ain't mad. Yes, at him. he is. Uh, <laughs> listen, yeah, MarcusDWiley.com. Make sure y'all go support him. Thank you for yeah. pulling up, Marcus. Man, yeah. I love yeah. you. Yeah, Thank you're, you, you're a king in this thing. Um, and I'm still believing God for what we talked about, about, you know, hosting some of these award shows or whatever. I, I don't forget when somebody drops something on me like that, I'll be like, all right, God. Yeah, yeah. you know, so. so sure. I receive it and I appreciate you, man. Yeah, be blessed. Be Thank you, Marcus. You take care, King. Next, I'm going to bring up my buddy. Wake up, Sam. It's on mute right now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You hear me? Yes. What's going on? I'm sorry, y'all. What's going on with everybody? Man, your platform I'm has... I'm watching, I'm watching the same uh, the WNBA draft. I was like, somebody <laughs> said it was Candace Parker's got, got, um, Candace Parker got drafted. So I had to see, did she get drafted? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, did she get really drafted? I was like, really into that. But you did she? I, I, you know what? It says that she signed with the Aces for one year or something like that. I was like, what? I don't know if that's true though. That nah, don't sound don't like know. it's true. No, nah, I don't seem like it would be. But I don't know. Crazy I things. I mean, maybe happened. she is. 
It seemed like she signed. She's re-signing. Yeah, she's re-signing anyway. Sorry, y'all. You Sorry, y'all. What's up, everybody? What's going on? What's going on, beautiful people? So this is your Miracle Monday. <laughs> this is? Yeah, your Miracle Monday. Since it's Monday and we on this live. So, oh, okay. yeah, your Miracle oh, I Monday. I wasn't in the space. I didn't pray before. Um, <laughs> he said, no, you got to get into the spirit. You got to get into the spirit. You got to get into the spirit. Amen. So, and so I didn't get into the spirit and prepare y'all, but I, I I might hit some spiritual at some point during this thing. We'll see where this goes. Listen, you have your platform has been exploding on YouTube. I watched you grow last year in like three months to like like a hundred thousand or something in like a couple of months. What made you take the approach? Do you feel like your platform is catering to men where it is helping uh women understand how men operate and think yeah well you know what my intention was for it to be an unbalanced like a balanced perspective that was the intention was for me to create a platform where i was kind of like in the middle i didn't want to go all one way or one or the other what ended up happening was over time i felt like men were gravitating more towards me and what I was saying because I do have more of a old school perspective and that's really what's fire right now. That's really what's as much as I what we see in the dating market, I felt like the my perspective was more old school, more yeah. conservative, and it resonated with a lot of men. And so my platform I, I on YouTube specifically is like mostly men. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. how's that working out for you? You feel like you've been growing a lot while you've been releasing this content and being intentional about studying this stuff and learning. Uh, how has that been shaping you as a woman and giving you clarity uh, when you begin to start dating again and intentionalizing your purpose partner? Well, you know, I think that there's a lot of things I had to learn about, like in this journey, uh, <laughs> There's a time I'm like, oh, I'm a little toxic, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> you you got you got some issues. <laughs> you might need to get back in front of uh, in front of a therapist or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, I've learned a lot about myself as far as like you know, I I think that I I'm understanding more and more about what men desire what they're looking for and it's helped me kind of like shape my identity in the dating market you know i've been divorced for a while now when i first went on your show um i wasn't yet all the way divorced now i have been and so um, that was in 2021 right gosh uh, yeah i think that was 2021 um hold on i gotta look at it in my head you said when I when we did the show. Yeah, we did the show. 2021. Yes, I thought you were yeah. talking about when I got divorced. I was like, no, yeah. divorce last year. Right. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So that was 2021. You yes. went through a long, yes, drawn out divorce. Yes. And you made it on the other side. And, 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 and you don't smell like smoke. Amen. Been through the fire and don't smell like smoke. Amen. <laughs> so, so as you so you said that you noticed some toxic traits, and so what have you done to? to start eradicating that in your life? Well, it's, it was first understanding what my, who my identity is. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of times where women, not only myself, but women, we try to find ourselves, our identity really in relationships and with other people and really trying to figure out who I am as a woman. And, and that's my responsibility to fill my cup. It's right. no one else's responsibility to make me happy. It's my responsibility to make me happy. It's my responsibility to find my identity in in God and not a man or not or or any mere mortal. It really is between me and God. And and that was a big thing for me because I'm a people pleaser. I was, you know, raised that way, bred up to be that way. And um, my identity was found in pleasing people and making them happy with me. But then I lose my identity trying to make someone else happy or fill somebody else's cup. And so really learning how to like deal with that, learning to how to deal with the, I call it the wounded girl inside of me, um, where it's like, it's my wounds that are speaking. It's not necessarily what's actually happening, but it's my wounded person within me that is saying certain things to me and, and not to go with that and learning how to manage my emotions. No one else's responsibility to manage me. It's my responsibility to manage me. 
And what what was the defining moment that made you come to that realization? Because because are you are you currently in therapy? Yeah, I've been in therapy for years. Oh, so 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 therapy is a the foundation of what you do. Like, what is it a monthly? You go like once a month? Or how? What's um, your idea? I would honestly say when I first started therapy. Uh, well, I started therapy when I was. Oh, goodness. Was it 2015, 2016? I've been on, you know, on off with the same therapist ever since then. Um, when I was going through my divorce, um, I was seeing her every week. Um, every week I was seeing her. Um, now that I'm on the other side of that, you know, we see each other probably one um, biweekly or like every three weeks we see each yeah. other. So the therapy was the foundation. Like she keeps me accountable, but this is, somebody said this to me and I, I really want to say this. Therapy is not, it helps you get to a place about you. Like it helps you reach certain conclusions about you. It's more like a mirror, but it's not the transform. That's not the transforming. It's you understanding you, you haven't seen yourself in a different perspective. Now what? I think a lot of people yeah. expect like sitting in front of a couch, like, oh, I'm telling people are making me see things I haven't seen before and they're challenging me on my thought processes. But really the work comes into, OK, I acknowledge this. What do I do about it now? And that's been where like I've, you know, had people around me that keep me accountable. And then obviously my relationship with God. So it's been a team effort. A team effort. Yeah. Uh, would you feel like it's a requirement for your future hubby to to um be in counseling and be in therapy before y'all get married to do premarital counseling? Um, I think premarital counseling is important. I wouldn't require him to have a therapist. Um, no, I'm talking I, about, well, I'm saying premarital counseling. Yeah, no, I would, I would, I would want a premarital situation. I would, <laughs> situation. I would because I mean, like I said, I did premarital counseling before. Um, and so I, I would want premarital, you know, absolutely. But I would, I would, I, w I need to see somebody through at least eight seasons. Four to eight, eight seasons. seasons. Four to so eight. So you said for two years. Four to eight seasons, yes. So you said nobody better not come to you with no proposal unless you done been with them for two years, minimum. Four to uh, a yeah, year to two years. To so they can go after the four. We can go, we can after four to eight. So the four, four is the proposal, and then the other, the other four is the planning the the wedding. I haven't thought this far in advance. Um, I haven't one hundred percent thought all this through. You asked me a lot of questions. I haven't thought like. I you don't know about four to eight. I like because I've already done a fast situation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm not seasons on the calendar. L. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying season on the calendar. I'm saying four seasons. Why? Because you, it's very important for somebody to see you see to see somebody through different seasons. That's what I yeah. believe. Because how they handle different aspects of life is very important information. OK, yeah. so I think that, you know, as much as premarital counseling was beneficial, there were certain things we had not even discussed. I didn't even know yet until we hit a conflict. Yeah. You know, yeah. he found out about me. I found out about him. Right. So I'm saying, I, Brandy, I got married in six months. OK, <laughs> I already been there, done that. OK, I, I, I got married. I met the man and was married in six months. <laughs> I, well, I hear you, Brandy. That's admirable. You know, you can't be out here in this. I get that girl. You said six months is my waiting time. That's about as far as I can go. And here's the thing. I'm not mad. I'm actually not mad at you for that. I'm not. I, I, I just think that for me. Premarital counseling is good, but it was in a season where things were good. And so yeah, there's yeah. a different perspective you have when everything's great. But when things are hitting the fan and a different version of you shows up in conflict, then there's a there's a data and there's things that you have to know about that person as well. So I would want to I would want to see different seasons as well. That's good. And that's fair enough. Like I said, you you done been through some things. Oh, Jesus. I have. Yeah. You've been through some things. What you got going on now? I got an email from you today from uh, you're always sending emails out with different things that you'll be talking about on lives. You go live every Wednesday. Um, and um, 
So yeah, tell, share about that. How can how can oh, you gonna cut me off? You gonna cut me off quick? You don't have me on here. Way in, no, y'all. I'm gonna say this loud because that's just what I'm gonna do. You ain't gonna have no mixed girl up and waiting in the dad waiting room, and you gonna leave you on limit me to ten minutes while I've been waiting for for, for at least thirty minutes. I've been saying to people, this is what I say to people. I don't drive nowhere. If I if I'm driving there an hour, I gotta be there for an hour. If I'm driving somewhere for 30 minutes, I got to be there for 30 minutes. You're not going to stop me from speaking. You you got to come up with some more questions. I need I need two more questions before okay. you, you move me from this daggone live now. So, all right, so this. So I'll ask you like I asked Vincent. What, did y'all see that in the comments? Okay, because I'll be wow. trying about that. All right, so have, have, you, have you been back in these dating streets and, and, and dated and seen what's out there? You hear a lot of people talking about after marriage. They've been out in the dating streets and there's pee in the pool and it ain't what they expected. Uh, have you been out in these dating streets? Yeah. And have you, have you liked what you've seen? Or do you feel encouragement or discouragement? Um, that's a good question. I like that you asked me that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm glad you asked me that. Um, 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 what do I think? What do you um, feel? What do you no, feel? No, you know what? I'm not. I'm not just. No, I'm not discouraged. In fact, when I first came out into the, uh, you know, into the dating market, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, you got a, you got a child, you got, you know, you've been divorced. This and the third. It was very, very negative. Um, that yeah. no one, you know. That that's what I was being told. Um, but it's it really is not that. I think that it's been it's been a journey, first of all, of me understanding me and learning different ways of dealing with certain, you know, circumstances and things like that. But I I wouldn't say I'm just I'm no, I'm encouraged. I'm not discouraged. Are you actively uh, dating currently? Like, am I in a relationship? No, not well, um, of course I know that. Well, are you in a relationship now? <laughs> Wow! Uh, uh, Y'all see that? Y'all see that? He said, "He said, well, I know that you're single. You ain't got nobody. Oh, let, let me just make it sound official. <laughs> let me let me just make it sound official. Well, because I have Are to know you? what to ask you as a friend, Everybody I have to ask single. as an interviewer. I was saying, like sometimes it's hard for me to ask people questions I already know, but I forgot it's not. It's for the general public. So, wow, <laughs> wow." So are you? you know, that? All right, let me be professional. Are you currently in a relationship? No. <laughs> wait, no, 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 wait, wait. Ask me again. Ask me again, because I want to do it again. Hold on. Let me ask you. Ask me again. So Sam, uh, you know, um, are you currently in a relationship? Who's asking? <laughs> <laughs> Who's asking? The world, the public is asking. <laughs> all those, all those many men that follow you on uh, YouTube, all your subscribers. Oh. <laughs> well, they know. No, I, I'm, I'm single. <laughs> I'm not in a relationship. Oh Lord Jesus! So you said that. Um, let me ask you this real quick before I let uh, let you go. Sure. Sure. When you look at when you've been afforded money, you had housekeepers and butlers and chefs and all that stuff taking care of you um what a lot of women would deem as the soft life um do you feel that the next person that god brings into your life or whoever god brings to your life how important is finances um as a decision making whether or not you decide to um you know embark upon that journey of of dating said gentleman um, I think for me, you know, I would, finances are important, but they're not everything. And so I think that in the future, you know, my, my biggest thing, honestly, like I'll be honest with y'all, this is like real talk is being a man of your word. It's character. It's integrity. It's the things that money can't buy because there's a lot of people with finances and things of that nature, but they don't, I did a video just recently and I said that. It's not somebody's resume or what they look like on the outside. It's your experience with them that is your truth, not how you feel about them or how you feel about the package or the potential. It's your experience. And so for me, like 
I want a positive experience with somebody that respects me, that loves me, that that like likes me, that likes who I am as a person, that supports me. Um, those things matter to me way more than finances, because there's a lot of people with finances, whether we realize it or not. But it's more it's far less men that like walk with integrity and carry that um, responsibly. Hmm. And so you are a, a lot of people don't know that you're a whole therapist out here. You know, yeah, uh, no, I am. Uh, Y'all don't know that. That's like my but I'm a lead clinician for a nonprofit. That is my full time job. The part time stuff is the stuff I do online. But my full time job is being a lead clinician for a, a nonprofit out here. And you just made a debut in uh, Country Wayne Skits as a as a therapist. <laughs> I am Country Wayne's therapist. Yes, I am. <laughs> Like what? Like there's no other better branding. I am is I am. I it is me, and I am her. And it what kind is of her. what kind of feedback have you gotten from that? Uh, I think everybody just basically say, um, "Don't sleep with them." That's just basically the minute. <laughs> the minute. That's the number. That's really the number one thing. Like they be, they're like, "Oh, Sam, are you gonna be like the other ones, the other therapists on the skits and?" You know, this, that, and the third. They just got to watch the song play. Um, but they, they're just basically like, I hope she's not like everybody else. And then there's people arguing for me on on that and being like, "If th this is Samantha Lee. Have you seen her platform? She's not going to go. She's not going to get down like that. Wayne's in for Wayne's in for a real surprise. So yeah, Samantha Lee, she's fiery or whatever. I'm like, you don't know what it is. No, but yeah. y'all will see the um y'all will see the, the I'm gonna clip. go watch it, yeah, because it popped up in my my uh news feed the other day and I said I need to you know circle back and go watch it. All somebody right. said somebody said, Oh my god, I almost fell off the treadmill. <laughs> Don't fall off the treadmill, sis. <laughs> it ain't worth it. He said, Don't sleep with him. Oh, no, that's God, that was God. the number one thing. Like, don't sleep with it. Oh, you're gonna be like da 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 da. da. You know, and I listen, you gotta sleep, you gotta let the song play. Mind you, you guys, you know, these are skits, right? You know, they are skits. It's not, you know, <laughs> they are skits. Art, art imitating life and life imitating art. So you know. what you saying, Latares? No, I'm saying not with you. I'm just saying that you know, sometimes some sometimes people take the character too far in real life. What was Tara saying, y'all? I didn't say nothing about you. Whoa, okay. I said nothing about you. Yo, 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 character. I'm just saying. But you know, I'm just talking about the acting world. You know, I'm in the acting world. So oh, that's... you were an actor? No, I used to direct and produce shows across the country. Oh, so, that's right. Did yeah. did the people know that? Do y'all know that? Um, all right. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. All right. No, no sound. Now, do I have permission to let you go so I can bring David Burris up? At this point, I feel I feel like I've done my ado. And I appreciate you for having me on. They I really do. That, I... They said, can he lead, love, and like responsibly? Girl, that's righteous. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So Thank it's, you uh, yeah. <clears throat> that's dope. That's dope. Proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. How many subscribers you got right now on YouTube? <clears throat> uh, I think it's like 370, 371 or 72,000. In about a year and two months. Yep. You look at you counting. Yep. A year and two months. That's right. 371,000 in a year and two months. That's right. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So um, did you want, you want me to, how did you want me to close out? You want me to just, how how you want me to leave your show? Because I know you. No, I want you, I want you to do this. I saw something. No, I saw something that you did on um, Real Talk Kim. Oh, yeah. You dropped like some amazing gems. So, yeah. whatever's on your heart, just take about two minutes and just share whatever's on your heart. Oof. Um, I think the. <laughs> I think the biggest thing, you know what, guys, this is actually something that I, I, I was dealing with this weekend. And so I'm just going to share the lesson that God has given me this weekend. Um, I realized there was a lot of things that I was about to do um, in my own personal journey. And um, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I was going to get some skin removed from my stomach. I ain't gonna lie. 
And um, what I was going to do, I was going to do that. And I felt like y'all went to multiple doctors, like this and the third. I just kind of kept going to different places and uh, getting estimates and things like that would be a no, a no, a no, a no. And I just kept kind of going or somebody would drop uh, a new doctor in. I'm like, oh, that's God. And I start talking to them again. So this last time, you guys, some just didn't feel right. My spirit, this, that, and the third. And I went and saw this particular doctor and she was like, you know, I told God, I remember being in the room like, God, you know, this is not what you want me to do. Like, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm okay. I already feel like I don't, I'm not sure about this. I like, but just give me a sign. Just give me a sign. And so when I walked in or the doctor walked in, she looked at me <coughs> and she was like, I'm not willing to cut you. And I was like, and I was like, okay, God, that's the best sign you give me. I mean, there's not a, there's not a better sign than the doctor telling you, I'm going to give you your money back because I'm not willing to do this to you. You, you know, the scar would be worse than the actual issue. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. But I just want to say to you guys, sometimes in our lives, I find that we try to make things work and then we ask God to bless it. And what I've learned is that in divine order, the only way that that works and true surrender works is when you allow God to lead the path. That means when, before I make the plan, before I, 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 Whatever you decided to, whether I leave the job or go to the next position or pursue the relationship or whatever that is, you ask God first. That's what surrender looks like. And if we're being honest with ourselves, a lot of times we create, we decide to say to God, like, okay, you know, God, I, I like your plan, but I think mine is better. Yep. And that's the real the reality of it. We don't really trust God with his divine plan and his divine order. And that when we start trying to create things and make things happen in our own strength and in our own will, a lot of times they don't they don't go the way that we want them to go. And that's just me learning like what true surrender is. So for you guys that are in the chat and you guys that are watching this on the replay, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, true surrender means God first. That means before I create the plan, before I do everything in my power to make this happen in my own strength, listening to that discernment that's like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Maybe not. I mean, I'm uncomfortable about this. And then moving accordingly. God first. And then you make the plan. And then you do everything in your power. Because you'll find that when you have no peace and you're trying to make all these things happen, you take it on God way and that don't belong to you. So um, <clears throat> I guess my 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 warning wasn't good enough, huh? Your what? When I told you don't do it. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you did say that. I ain't gonna say you didn't say that. You did say that. You mean I told you? And you, Latarius is right. He told me. He told me not to. But you know, women. You know how we are. We're psycho. You know what I'm saying? We're like, oh, and he, Latarius. This is for another live, but you brought up an amazing point because in my, in our conversation, Lateris was talking about how, you know, women today, we just are really, really hard on ourselves, a filter culture. I mean, there's a lot of women right now. They won't even go on the YouTube space because you ain't got no filter on. You got to yep. how you look and that's it. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's like we live in, in a society where things have to be perfect or we have to see them as perfect. And what you said on that call was what your imperfections are will make you perfect. It's not the perfect that makes you perfect. And I yes. think that a lot of times we look for, and I, I'm guilty of this, we look for the little things that can make us, you know, give me the edge here, or give me the edge there. And it's like, but that's not real. Reality is I had a 8.9 pound baby and she was 23 inches long and it was a healthy pregnancy. My baby's healthy. It's part of it's part of who I am. And yes, I have a little bit extra skin on my stomach, but that's it. And so um, I, I, I've learned like, OK, there there's beauty and imperfections. So anybody on here, you know, with that same level of pressure, I just want to give that to you. you no, know, a lot of people saying that they needed that. And, and that's what I said. I said, I just hate to see so many women striving for perfection. And I yeah. said, it's the beauty is in the imperfection. When you see somebody that's quote unquote perfect they look fake they look like yeah. aliens you know what i'm saying they don't even look like humans anymore i think that oftentimes we're chasing this level of perfection and making sure that everything is symmetrical because that's the 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 standard of beauty and all that and it's like i said how dare we take the canvas i said the worst thing this is what i said to you this is this is, this is beautiful i said i have this a beautiful art piece that's in my house 
I said, the worst thing that I can do to insult the artist is to go and start painting on that painting. Yeah. And I said, and if I do that, the, the artist will come if they came back to try to show somebody else that work and be like, look at what I did for the, that's not my work. You be like, no, no, you did do this. I would have never put that there. I would have never put that. What did you do? You destroyed my work. I said, what happens is that God is going to be coming back looking for us. He said that you are wonderfully made, beautifully and wonderfully made. You are you are perfect in his sight. And then we go and say, well, I don't like this. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go, you know, get braces and stuff like that. I ain't saying nothing like that. Um, and you shouldn't go work out and, you know, try to get better. But when is enough enough? Why do we have to keep going under the knife and changing this and adding this and take and, and it just when would you get to the point where you say, you know, I look in the mirror and I love myself, you know, and I like I love how I look. And so yeah. that's what I want to encourage you, because I ain't seen not one dude say well, if, if Sam had this little, this little piece of skin right here taken away, she'd be bad. She'd be bad. But that little skin that I see when she be sitting up here taking a little selfie pictures, that turned me off. I can't I can't do that. I ain't going to be able to do that. Yeah, says you no man. says no man. And then women try to say this. Well, I ain't doing it for no man in the first place. I'm doing it for myself. It's like, well, why would you put yourself to that, that amount of pain just for you to look at yourself? You no, you're right. It's not real. We, we, we deflect and say we're not doing it for a man or we're not doing it for other people or whatever. But if that's the case, if you're doing it for yourself, then you're the only one who got to see yourself. Keep your shirt down. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's we strive for perfection. And I say that God has already made us beautiful it's a masterpiece That's and right. if we look at ourselves as a masterpiece then we know that god is the greatest artist of all time that's right Sarah, thank you so much for joining us thank you for your transparency because i was going to ask you um did you ever, actually go through with that because it was supposed to take place what last week yeah it's supposed to happen on thursday thursday morning i was supposed to go in and i went in i was there but you know i knew there was something in my spirit i knew and when she said what she said, which I, I was surprised, I was like, okay, this is a doc, doctor of integrity, honestly, because yeah. you could have easily just take my money and, you know, I'd already paid for it. She just, she was going to reimburse, she reimbursed me. And that's what that. you said to me. I was like, I was like, don't do it. You said, I already paid for it. I already paid for it. So then we got off the phone. I said, Heavenly Father, listen, I don't want this to fall on deaf ears. And I began to pray. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting up there like, I love this. I, mm -hmm. I, I just love it because, yeah, we I've had conversations with people and they just be like, whatever, you're talking crazy. And I'd be like, OK, you know, at the end of the day, it's like we're chasing beauty for no reason. Thank you so much. I don't want to hold my boy David up too much longer. But Sam, thank you for your transparency. I'm glad you shared that story. That's that, that's powerful. I think you helped a lot of people with that. Thank yeah. you. Thank so, you. All thank right. y'all. Have a good. And, and, and this is your is this an anniversary episode? Yeah, what four year anniversary. Well, ha well, happy four year anniversary, y'all. This is not easy work. Let me just say that. I know you have me on here and I'm sorry for who is it, David? I'm sorry, David, if it's David's name. Um, I just want to say happy four years. This is a tough platform, y'all. You don't understand what goes into it. And especially what Lateris does. He takes it to another level. He is excellence. He's driven by excellence. And he really does make sure he puts on a production and elevates and elevates and elevates. So four years, cheers to you, sir. Uh, I'm like I said, the I think it was Latavia that came on before. I'm proud to know you. I'm proud of the things that you've done. I'm proud of the, the, the platform you've built. And I'm proud of the man that you are. And I, I'm just grateful that, you know, we were able to connect that. in this journey called life, you know. Somebody said, I'm a whole toddler right now. I'm four years old. He said, a whole toddler. <laughs> he said, who's a whole toddler? Because uh, I'm four years old. Siobhan said, I'm Oh, a yes, it's true. That's true. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing. Y'all ask what our platform is on YouTube. It's Love Samantha Lee. I love Samantha Lee. Love, love yes. Samantha Lee. Uh, right. So uh, thank you so much. Four is the meaning of foundation, the Bible. Keep up the foundation and many more four years to come. That's awesome. Thank you, Sam. You be blessed. All right. Thank you, All guys. Bye-bye. Right. David, wake up. <laughs> Take it off mute. <laughs> Brethren. How you doing? I know it's past your bedtime. It's Brethren. Well, I'm in California, so we good. Oh, yeah, you good. Yeah. You good. How you doing, King? I'm good, bro. You? Why do people think we brothers? Because... Uh, 
We could be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we both look. We'd be like, that, that got to be. Uh, let me tell you something, David. So many guys and so many women have forwarded your episode to their spouses that helped save their marriage. I don't know if you saw it, but it was an episode. I was in um, Atlanta and it was a singles event that I did. This married couple snuck in because they said they had to come talk to me mm. and say thank you for the episode I did with, with you because they were on the brink of divorce and the lady's friend sent her the episode and said, tell your husband to watch this. And it was mm. the only thing that got through to her husband because you said being a husband ain't fair and you challenge men to step up and be men. Yes, sir. Um, and yeah, bro, just thank you because you have no idea how many DMs I get from people. Well, heck, you know, how many DMs you get from people uh, telling you? <laughs> Listen, well, first of all, I get DMs from people wanting me to hook you up with them and i'm sick of that and i told you that i'm sick of it okay sick of it you sick of it you sick of it i'm sick of it yeah i'm fed up i can't go nowhere um is there any way you can introduce me? i'm sick of it you sick of it you be like say hi it, to me first can you say hi yeah, to me please first? say hi yeah say hello <laughs> but no man listen i want to say thank you and to celebrate you like everybody else that said before me man my life has changed because of you and because of you allowing me to share your platform, man. So thank you, King. Um, I, I, my life has is just, is just changed because of that, brother. So I'm grateful for you. Man, you're a master at what you do. Um, share with the people who may be their first time meeting you. Let them know who you are, what you do, and all good things, David Burris. Yeah, guys. So my name is David Burris. I am a native of the San Francisco Bay Area. I saw somebody in the comments. Richmond actually is my city where I'm from. Vanessa, good to see you. Uh, married 21 years this past April, two sons that are just amazing. And what I do, man, is I help people get together, stay together, be together, all the above. I'm on a mission, man, to um, I just hate divorce and I hate all things that come with it. My wife and I nearly didn't make it. And God brought us through that, man. I, I made God a promise that I would go get as many people as I possibly could, man. So that's what I do. And I'm on mission. How long have you been doing this work? Man, uh, we've been married 21 years. I would say 30 years. 30 years 30 of this, years. man. Yeah. 30 years of this this work. It's not easy, but it's it's man, it's rewarding. So what's the hardest thing about it? When you say this work ain't easy, what do you find is the most challenging thing when trying to deal with people to stay married or become the one for the one or challenging them to be all the guy called them to be? What do you find is the most challenging? I think the most challenging thing, man, is that people want to be married and want to be comfortable at the same time. It's not okay. Either you're going to be married or uncomfortable, but you won't have both because you're always stretching. You're always growing. You're always building. And anytime you grow, you stretch, you become uncomfortable. So helping people understand that you can't be comfortable and married at the same time because you're always growing perpetually. But David, that sounds discouraging to people. They want they want to get married and they want to live happily ever after. They don't want to feel like they've been stretched and feel like it's a challenge every day. Speak on that. Uh, man, I'm going to give you, I'm going to almost juxtapose what you're saying, but I feel like if you are not stretching and uncomfortable, you can't be happy, right? Because that means you are staying the same, right? And we want to make sure that we're stretching and growing. And so I need the discomfort. I need the uncomfortability because that shows me I'm doing some new things. I'm stretching. I'm becoming new. How can you be happy and stagnant at the same time? How can you be happy and stagnant at the same time? Yeah, some people you, may feel like they just, they, they're finally coasting in their marriage, that they finally found a place where, you know, it's easy, it's comfortable that, you know, why does everything have to be so much work and stretching and Oh, stretching for what? You know, what, what, what are they stretching for? Yeah. If you're coasting, especially in your relationship or marriage, you don't love the person you're with that much. Why do you say you that? Why? why? Because they are not the same. They won't be the same person next Saturday they are today. Facts. And if you are coasting in your marriage, you're not paying attention to how they're changing, how they're growing, how they're developing. Whoa. 
and you're lazy, but I don't want to get in. This is my bad. No, go there. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's it, man. So we, we want to be perpetually growing. I don't want, listen, if you're single and watching this, don't marry anybody who won't stretch you or cause you to change, right? If they don't cause you to change, if they don't cause you to be different, God told us to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue that word, multiply, multi means many, ply means layers. There should be different layers of who you are because you're with me. So if I don't learn more about me, and you don't learn more about you, we probably don't need to be together. Mm. Mm. Dave, nobody asked you to get on here and start something. See, I, I, I thought so we were having thing. I've been begging you to do a podcast with you. What? For, I said to do it. No, sir. No, sir. What? Letaris. Are you, are you talking ago. about to do an actual podcast podcast? Yeah. Like a, not yeah. an episode. You talking about yeah. pull out the podcast. Yeah. We got, we, we got work to do, bro. We're gonna call it twins. <laughs> twins twin. we're happy been. Yeah, twins where have you been podcast. Bro, twin. you're doing a great twin. Where have you been? Where have you been? So um, so what do you think about that? Like when you when you look at because you just you just about to say I uh I did a great or doing a great job. What are you seeing from your lens? Because of course, you know, I can't see what I'm doing oftentimes. Sometimes I feel like God hides me from myself. So mm. what is it that you see? What do I see concerning you? Yeah. Man, I see stretching. I see growth. I see a I see a man who is in a new season of his life. I see a man who's discovering a different version of himself. I see yeah. a man who has healed in front of people and God is now opening doors for him to now expand and take that healing elsewhere. Um and I see a man who has some great opportunity in front of him, man. So I'm just excited to know you. When I got your text, it's a yes. It's just yes for whatever you want to do because you're that dude. And again, you have opened so many doors for me, bro. Anything you need, I got, you know, I'm there. Well, what I love about it, I asked God for a community. I said, God, I want to be, I was so imbalanced in my life starting a podcast. I just had a whole lot of female friends and I just really had like a, a couple of male friends. So I became intentional. I said, God, I want you to surround me around good kingdom minded brothers that can keep me lifted up, that can hold my arms up when I'm on the mountain and I want to and I'm in a war and I want to give up. And I said, God, I need you to surround me about that. I said, God, you answer prayers. And so, God, I'm going to diligently seek that. And so I thank God for bringing you into my life because you're one of those brothers that challenge me. You're one of those brothers that I look at, that I glean wisdom from and insight. I'll sit there and I'll read posts that you make on Instagram. I'll swipe through and read every one of those things on those on those carousel posts that you make. And I'll be like, this joke is just, you know, it's just certain people that are just full of God's wisdom and knowledge and always dropping gems. And you just one of those people, man. It's just like you just see God's anointing all over your life. And so that's just that's just dope. I mean, I that's appreciate dope. you, man. And you always hit me up. You're like, what can I do to encourage you? What can I do to pray for you? Or what can I do for you? You know, um, which is a very that's the heart of a servant, hmm. you know, to to come. And when you first sent that to me, I was like, I mean, soon as we, you know, started working together, did the podcast. Like, hey, well, is there anything I can do for you? And it and it it really throws me off because I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know what, what you know, what could yeah, you do? Weird. I, it, yeah, I that can be weird, bro. Right. Yeah. yeah, that can be weird. Yeah, I get it. I get <laughs> that. Like, all the what time. I do? But it challenged me to also when talking to somebody, because if I have a genuine need, you've already laid the foundation that if I had a genuine need, I know who I can come to. Of course. You know, and you've already created that. Uh, you created that open door. And so yeah. I thank you so much for being that brother in my life that has, you know, just say, hey, what can I do for you? Is there anything that I can do for you? Uh, Vanessa said David has a big heart. That's um, my sister. Yeah, man. And and you do, brother. Um, what what is something that you like to share with people? Um, what's on your heart? Um, really, man, I just want to say keep following the terrorist. And the, the reason why I ask you to do that and keep supporting is because there isn't a lot of healthy conversation and dialogue around relationships. That's just the bottom line. There are a bunch of people talking, but not a bunch of people who have wisdom. And so what I love about his platform is that it's honest, 
It's not always cute and it's not always sexy, but it's honest. It's real. It's kingdom. And so for those who are listening, I just, man, let's help get the word out. I mean, let's get people in the room because we need more conversations like this and uh, from people we can trust. So again, man, thank you, bro. You know, what's so interesting. I appreciate you saying that is that when I created this, I didn't know what I was creating. I just said, I want to heal in front of the world. And I said, this is going to be my place and my safe space that I'm just going to, uh, um share what's on my heart and yeah. i want to sit around other people that can operate in transparency because the bible says people overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb i said can i just get people because one of my favorite times in church was testimony service that was one of the yes, first things i got rid of in church is testimony service but i used to love it so much because i would have an opportunity to feel seen to hear other people are going through some things and you'd be like wow you yes, know you'll get a month at first, giving honor to God, the deacons, yes, the elders sir. of the church. You yes, know, um, my gout is acting up. My gout yes, is flaring right. up again. And uh, yeah. you know, Lil Ray Ray got arrested again. You know, yeah. uh, I'll pray for him. And uh, uh, Ned, you know, my husband, Ned, he he's still drinking. Y'all keep praying for him so he can yeah. get delivered. Uh, my car broke down the other day. And uh, yeah. I had to walk all the way down uh, to the Piggly Wiggly uh for groceries but i didn't even have no money. i went to the piggly wiggly and only had four dollars in my pocket i done had the nerve to get these groceries that was about 52 dollars uh but it was this man that was sitting right behind me he was standing behind me and he said you know what ma'am god told me to go ahead and help you out with those groceries see god is good and you I, like, I can tell you grew up baptist i can I tell grew, you grew up good in baptist <laughs> all that that's good in baptist yeah that's and good in baptist say, David, they'll say all of that and then they'll end it with, but God is good. But God you is be good. like, is he rich? Yeah. Is he God really? Is if you had yeah. all this, your son went to jail, your car broke down, your husband's still uh, an alcoholic, your gout yeah. is flaring up, and then you don't even have money to get the groceries, but God made a way out of no way and, yeah. and he sent the stranger to bless you, and God is good. Yeah. And I remember yeah. as a kid hearing that, and I'd be like, okay, God is good. He's good. You live yeah. long enough, man. That testimony, it used to be funny, but it, you start living some of that stuff yourself. And yeah. you went up, to, you know, God is good. Yeah, bro. So yeah, that I'm God grateful. is good. What yeah. moments have you had uh had in your life where you look back and didn't believe that you were gonna make it? But if it had not been for the hand of God, as the old folks say, where would you have been? Yeah. Share share with us a, a testimony about that. Man, I've been an entrepreneur for four years now. And I, I have no experience as an entrepreneur, no college degree. And um, I'm just watching God, you know, with entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is like a marriage. It's ups yeah. and downs, it's highs and lows, it's 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 coming and going. And I've just watched him keep me in perfect peace, bro. And so that is my testimony. I'm still here and God is still faithful and I'm still taking care of my family because God has honored his promise to me. So um and and to anyone listening, I, I promise uh, two two things I live by. I want to leave this with you all, man. I um I bet on I, I I trust God and bet on myself. That's my that's my that's my motto. Trust, trust God, God, bet on yourself. Bet on myself. Yeah, trust God in that order, right? So, um, you got to trust God, and if if you are trying to fulfill a vision that you can fulfill without God, it is too small. If you can do it by yourself, it's too small. So you need to build something that will kill you if God's not in it. And then bet on yourself, right? Bet on the fact that if he called you to it, it's because he saw something in you that you didn't see in yourself. So trust God, but bet on yourself. Just know God is God is able, and so are you when you do it his way. Absolutely amazing. Trust God and bet on yourself. I'm going to yes, live sir. by that mantra. Listen, yes, David, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, King. Thank you for yes, pulling up. Uh, anything that we can do to support you? What you got going on? Yeah, man, I'm really focusing on coaching. So if there's anyone who's listening who needs some good, solid, wise coaching around relationships and or purpose. So if good. you are trying to get some things out of you that God placed in you, or if you're trying to get relationships right, whether you are single or married, I would love to walk with you. Uh, if you're listening, just take my email address down. My website is being developed, uh, re revamped now to be done by the end of this week. But if you're listening now, info at David A. Burris, 
davidaburris.com. Just message me. I love to partner with you. Info at davidaburris.com. King, thank you again, bro. Thank you, King. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. You. We'll be in touch. Take care. Listen, man, that is absolutely amazing. Um, now this last probably 20 minutes, I'm going to do what was promised to y'all, uh, the free masterclass called the love blueprint. Um, for the last four years, after having all these conversations with different people, uh, it's really has blessed my life. And, um, I said, you know what, I want to do something to, to help this community. I always get a lot of people that DM me and, uh, asked me tons of questions about relationships and asked me to, to counsel them. And I'm like, no, I'm not a therapist. I'm, you know, uh, they said, but no, I want you to counsel me and my, 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 my wife going through X, Y, Z, or me and my husband going through X, Y, Z. And, um, I, you know, I'll give them advice, but I always shy away from it. But this is a season that God has told me to fully embrace the calling over my life and everything that he's called me to do in this season. So, um, I'm guessing most of you here have watched or seen the Dear Future Wifey podcast, but if you've never seen it, never encountered me, never even heard of me, and you don't even know how you got on this YouTube live, uh, and you're wondering what this bald-headed black man is about to be talking about, if that's you, I want you to put a three in the comments. Put three in the comments if you've never... Um, you know, if you've never even heard of the podcast, you said that jacket clean. Yeah, I love that jacket. That's the shoot. So when Tavia was talking about the shoot that 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 she did, that was that shoot right there. Um, uh, let me go to the next slide. Um, let me ask everyone a question. Are you tired of wasting your time, money and energy with the wrong one? Put yes in the comments if you're tired of wasting your time, money and energy with the wrong one. Put yes, if that's you. Because, you know, I've been there before and um, I felt the same way. I felt the same way. Now, some of you, um, some of you know more about me than others. So before we begin, I'm going to share a little bit about my story as it relates to relationships. I've been divorced now for eight years after a 10 year marriage. I always say two weeks shy of 10 years when I was 28. I said I do. Honestly, for plenty of wrong reasons. I knew I wanted marriage, even though I had no idea what marriage meant or what being a husband meant. Even though we had core areas that weren't aligned, it just felt like it was the natural next step in our relationship. So we got married. We got married and I was 28 years old. There was so much I didn't understand about myself and about how I should show up as a husband. Coupled with an unhealed view of life in myself, I made mistakes and choices that hurt her and me. And no matter the heights we were able to overcome, we still reverted back to differences in core values and desires. When we truly know ourselves and we understand the core of who we are, we can save ourselves and the ones we connect with a lot of drama and trauma. Now, fast forward to the relationship that I engaged in post-divorce after I learned about myself and thought I healed. I know some of y'all have been there. You gained insights about one part of yourself, allowing you to show up differently in the world, or at least you started striving to show up differently, only to learn that there's still more healing work to be done. Well, I landed myself in a whole toxic relationship. You ever experienced shrinking the very essence of who you are to accommodate the person you're with? The, the person you say you love and who says they love you, but you can't even freely be you. That's where I found myself. But by the grace of God, I woke up and I got out. And I can understand a little more when the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things. I can understand that choices for who we partner with have to be rooted in more than a feeling. It has to be rooted in purpose. And that's what you always hear me say is I want to find my purpose partner. And my journey led me to knock on the door to marriage and I was ready to get married. We connected at our core. We didn't just enjoy being with each other. We had a shared vision. I always say when you know, you know, and it doesn't take years to figure it out. So we started pre premarital counseling. Now this wasn't the toxic relationship that I was involved in. It was a relationship that y'all heard me share that in my episode on January the 4th, where I talked about healing from heartbreak. But it was a relationship that I was in right after marriage. 
and towards the tail end of my marriage, which gave me the wisdom of do not date while you're still still married. That's what I was telling uh, Vincent is that you've been unhealed. You're going to make an unwise decision. But in the healing from heartbreak episode, um, we started pre premarital counseling. I shared that. Like, let's dive deep into this thing that we plan to build. We discussed our future lives together. I took actionable steps to plan my proposal. We even discussed dates for us to get married. It was We were supposed to get married last year on September the 13th. <laughs> yep. Well, as I sit before you, a single man, you all know the result of that one. I sat on the yellow couch in obedience to God to share my healing from heartbreak episode last January. Yep. I cried on that yellow couch and invited you into an instrumental moment. If I was going to share my journey with the world, I had to share it. I had to share the hard parts too. Let me tell you something. That was the most vulnerable thing I had to do. I was like, God, why are you asking me to do this? He said, I want you to live by what you preach. So I continue to invite you on this journey with me. I have now been able to use the insights of the over 200 guests I've interviewed on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, coupled with the latest in relationship research to develop a system to discover ourselves so we can find the one. And just like I've been bringing you on the journey for me to discover, recover, and uncover love with the Dear Future Wifey podcast, I'm going to coach you to discover yourself and find the one for those who want to walk this system out alongside me. Now, right now, you may be thinking you're tired of investing time, money and energy in the wrong relationships. Or you may be thinking you're tired of dating, but you can't wish away your desire to be married. You've already tried that <laughs> and said, God, just take the need for me, the desire for me to get married. Or perhaps you're thinking, does my purpose partner even exist? Yeah, we've all been there. Now, three days, I'm going to teach you ways to discover yourself so you can find the one tips to attract the right partner and practices to discern if they're right for you. But before we get to that, did I tell you it's my anniversary? <laughs> yeah, it's my anniversary. And i um, been so excited about that to have different guests on the podcast. And I I curated these people to come on the podcast that spoke into my life. And I've had so many testimonies about um, how they spoke into your lives. And so um, thank you all for joining me in the first two hours while we took a flashback and got a chance to talk to those people. Now, let's jump back into the love blueprint. This is the three day master class. Now, um, day one is definitely a time of celebration and bringing on past podcast guests as we, as we just did. But um, day one, we'll briefly discuss discovering self. Now, day two, we'll talk about the art of attraction. And day three, we'll talk about discerning the right one. The first topic is ways to discover yourself so you can find the one. We're going to dive into three self-discovery must-haves to truly know who you are as the foundation for which you find the one for you. Take out your notebooks and your pens as we dive into a quick lesson on the foundations for exploring your self-discovery skills. To discover oneself, we need to explore our identity, achieve mental harmony, and understand our personal needs and our psychological well-being. Let's talk about each of these topics. To discover yourself so you can find the one it is important to understand the concept of identity and its significance in our personal growth and development. We also can't be afraid to explore spirituality and religion and the roles it plays on our identity, good and bad. How many saved people we have in the chat? Do we have some saved people? Got some saved people? Put yes. If you, if you love the Lord, go and put yes in the chat. When's the last time you took the time to reflect on your personal beliefs and values and where they come from to really explore your identity? The first phase of my identified system truly explores our identity in these areas. When we don't take the opportunity to discover ourselves by exploring our identity, we will listen and sometimes cower based on what society, potential mates, 
or even may say about who we are and who we should be. And let me tell you that that won't work out forever. You'll find yourself start to rebel or even grow contentious in that relationship. You will eventually revert back to your true self and your true identity. So why not explore it and connect with others from it? The next way to discover self is achieving mental harmony. One of the ways we change and grow as a person is exploring how to align our thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes with our actions and decisions. Now, when this mental harmony is unbalanced, especially in the areas of beliefs, values, and behaviors, it affects what we allow and accept in our lives, including mates. And it also affects how we show up. I had to learn the common denominator in all my relationships has been me. So I had to take a hard look and fight the internal battles that kept me making choices that didn't align and harmonize with my identity and with my mental harmony. Let me recap a moment. We're talking about three ways to discover ourselves so we can find the one, which is the first topic of our Love Blueprint three-day masterclass. We discuss exploring identity and achieving mental harmony. Put which one resonated so far with you the most. Which one resonated the most more, most uh, with y'all? Lastly, but not least, we'll um, discuss understanding personal needs and psychological well-being. When we're fully aware of where we are and what we need, we accept anything offered to us. Even when we meet someone that is able to walk alongside us, we can't recognize or verbalize. So we sabotage and rationalize reasons we haven't found the one or can't be the one. So the first step in our love blueprint is discovering ourselves so we can find the one and we can do that by knowing our identity, achieving mental harmony, understanding personal needs and our psychological well-being. Hold on, let me pull up this thing. This thing just dropped out. The God has truly blessed you with a heart of purpose. Amen, man. When I tell you it's been an amazing journey, hold up, this thing just lost my my uh, video. Hold on, let me go back to it. Here we go. Uh, let me... Where was I at? Give me one minute, one minute. See now I lost my. I think I was right. Whoops. Discover yourself. All right, let's see. Hold on, let me go here. All right. All right, so day one. So why is now the right time? Marriages have been declining and people who want to get married are tired and ready to throw in the towel. But I have discovered there's a blueprint to heighten your odds. The biggest myth is that it takes forever to get to know yourself and find the one. The truth is we don't put the systems and steps in place that lead to the outcome we desire. When we don't fully know or accept ourselves, it leaves us tired, overwhelmed, and full of uncertainty and doubt. That's why I've taken insights from the over 200 guests on the Dear Future Wifey podcast and from the latest in relationship research to create a system that I follow. Stick around until the end, and I'll share how you can journey through the system with me as your guide. Just call me the love architect, y'all. Okay, now before we move on, let's talk to some more we're gonna we, no, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep going on. I, um, because at first I was gonna bring up some other guests, but we're gonna we're gonna keep rocking. Um, and because a lot of people didn't actually join on this, I was gonna have about 12 of us, and so we're good. Um contrary to popular belief, discovering yourself and finding the ones can lead like can feel like a breath of fresh air when you have a system in place. The identifying system finds uses the insights from the Dear Future Wifey podcast and relationship science to walk you step by step for how to discover yourself and how to discern the one. Do y'all believe that y'all know how to find the one? I want y'all to leave a comment. Do you feel like you are good at vetting the one? If you feel like you're good at vetting the one, let me hear you say yes. And if you if you don't, then say no. 
Do you feel like you're good at vetting the one? Yes, no, yes. Come on, it's 1,885 people. No, 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 no. Anymore, yeah, no, not yet. Sherilyn, you like that love architect? That hit me when I was putting this course together. Negative, nope. Yes, I do feel like, but she said, I feel like, nope, not at all. I need help. Absolutely not. I thought so, but clearly I was wrong. Nope, nope, nope. Yes, yes, nope, 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 nope. Yes, they always show true colors, though, half and half. That's interesting. That's good. I let God do that. I'm not good at it. <laughs> she said, I'm going to let go and let God. This other lady said, H-E double hockey sticks, no. She says, I wouldn't be traumatized now if I were. Man, I'm telling you, it can be very discouraging. Well, I, I get a lot of people that hit me up and they they um, they feel really discouraged out here um, dating. And, and, it, and it hurts my heart. I was talking to a woman that was 31. She was 30, no, 32. And I asked her um, if she felt if she felt hopeful. And she said she has given up on love. She has totally given up on love all the way because um, she just feels like she keep running into the wrong one. So it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Now, before I identify and I was making choices that didn't fit with my goals or my values, and there were times I didn't even like myself. I tussled with my struggles so I couldn't show up the way I really wanted or needed to. I felt tired. I felt disappointed. I felt frustrated. And I felt hopeless. Um. I've never even shared this before, but um, it was a moment in my marriage where I felt very suicidal. I've never, ever shared that before, but I felt very suicidal because um, as a perfectionist and a person that I felt like I could get relationships right. And then here I was becoming everything that I despise in relationships. Um, and it it nearly destroyed me like it nearly destroyed me. Um, I literally, we used to live like, if you walk out my backyard, there was a highway that was facing our backyard. And it was so many thoughts of me just walking out on the, in the highway and accidentally being killed by an oncoming car. But it was absolutely, uh, because I felt like, um, I just got it wrong. You know, I just felt like I just got it wrong and so um yeah i was I, I was i was sad i was depressed I looked just like him i remember one time have y'all ever had one of those moments where you slid down the wall you slid down the wall crying have y'all ever had one of those moments man i had a moment man i had gotten this toxic relationship after my marriage and it was the most toxic thing i ever had dealt with and I remember crying so bad, I just slid down the wall and I just sat on the floor and I cried. I don't know how long I cried. It had to be for hours. And I was just sitting there crying. Have you cried so, so much that you felt dehydrated? You felt like you couldn't even let out another tear? I mean, that was me. I was, I was broken. And I said, I'll never allow anybody to allow me to feel like that about myself ever again. But instead of pointing the finger at the person that was um, emotionally uh, abusing me in that relationship, um, I had to point the finger at me. I would never allow myself to ever give someone the power where I would feel like that ever again. After identifying, I can determine pretty quickly if someone aligns with my present and has the capacity for my future. I know my strengths. I know my struggles. I know who I am, where I am, where I am going, and the things I need. This, this gives me peace, happiness, and hope. And I'm now in the best place to be the husband I want to be and that God has called me to be to experience life with my purpose partner doing what God has called us to do. I actually can be in the middle of work and I just get excited when I think about my future wifey. We don't have time to be frustrated and tired and distracted. We're on a mission. Before we end, I'm going to share how you can join me and a limited amount of people in the identifying program. 
And listen, you have a choice to make. You can either continue to waste your money, time, and energy with the wrong one, or you can learn and apply a system for discovering yourself so you can find the one. So I invite you to register for identifying. Identifying is the only place that couples can gain the insight or individuals can gain the insight on how to become a couple. Um, like I said, watch the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I gained so much wisdom and knowledge talking to different people. And I got along with God and asked God, can you curate something through me that could help bless the multitude? And this is what he did. It's the only place for you to walk through this system with me. Identified has two phases. The first phase, which is four weeks, helps you to discover yourself. And the second phase, which is another four weeks, breaks down how to discern the right one for you and how to scout for your mate. Now, here's how it works. The first step is to register. Registration is limited. Once it's full, it's full. I, I mean, it's. I, I know the minute that I end up doing this, people are going to be flocking in, but uh, this is going to be a very intimate um, setting where we, um, we're going to journey through this thing together. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But once it's full, it's full. Um, not sure if I'm going to bring it back, but this is for this season right now. And I'm in total submission for this season. Uh, I haven't made plans to, for another cohort. So, you know, when people, cause I know the minute I do this, people going to start DMing me and say, can you run it back again? And I'm going to be like, then I start feeling pressure about that, but we'll just pray and ask God to bring it back. But I've carved, I've carved out some time for the next eight weeks to walk alongside this group and guide you through the identified coaching program. Registration closes at 11.59 p.m. on April the 30th or until full. Now, I'm so blessed to have over 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. So there's a chance that enrollment will fill up <laughs> closing registration prior to that. So I want y'all to jump in on that. Now, next, you'll have the opportunity to learn the program and do the work. We'll start the course on May the 1st with a live interactive session with me at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time each week for eight weeks. You'll access a module with a lesson, a lesson and activities. Every other week, we'll, you will get, we'll get together for a group identified coaching uh, session. A lot of y'all, I did this thing called the Lit Society a couple of years ago just to test. Uh, matter of fact, if some of y'all in the chat, I want y'all to DM me. I want to bring y'all up tomorrow and talk about the testimonies that y'all shared with me, uh, how impactful that program was and how intimate and I'm gonna let y'all share y'all story. So tomorrow I want to bring a couple of them up because that was powerful. I didn't promote it really big uh, on uh, my social media platforms. I talked about it a couple of times on my podcast episode. And then I said, all right, we'll just walk alongside a group of people. And it was, ah, those testimonies were amazing, but I can't wait for y'all to hear that. Um, so like I said, for each week, for eight weeks, you'll access a module with lessons and activities. Every other week, we will get together for a group, identify a coaching session, and you'll receive a certificate of completion at the end. Now, in this eight-week course, I'm not just going to share what to do. We are going to walk alongside each other for how to do it. For example, today we shared that the first step is the in the love blueprint is to discover yourself. We talked about the importance of exploring identity, achieving mental harmony, and understanding our needs and psychological well-being. And identified, those are some of the things we are going to unpack and provide practical ways for application in our lives. My question is this. Are you going to continue to waste money, time, and energy with the wrong one, feel defeated, ready to throw in the towel, and struggle in these dating streets like the 31-year-old girl that uh, I talked to that I had to encourage? This was a total stranger that I met while I was out, out eating. I said, how are you so young and you're giving up? She said, man, these dating streets got, what's she say? The dating pool has pee in it. I was like, man, listen, I, I can't live in the scarcity mindset and a mindset of lack. We serve a God that is able, period. You don't have to say anything else. A God that is able. Or are you going to invest in yourself so your experiences and outcomes can be different? Now think about it. How much are bad relationships costing you? It costs more than money. I can tell you that you can calculate all the money you spent on the wrong relationship. <laughs> if you could get it back, how much would it be? If you could get back all the money that see there, uh, there go Candace. She was in lit. 
that thing was absolutely amazing. Oh, Regina, Regina, I want you to make sure that you join me tomorrow. Uh, she's an attorney. She's absolutely amazing. I want her to join and talk about how powerful uh, the Lit Society was. Uh, but think about the time, the time that you spent wasting your time with the wrong one. How much does that work? Now, similar to other coaching programs that cost about $2,000, $4,000, this ain't that because I want to be a blessing to y'all. Since it's the fourth anniversary of the Dear Future Wifey podcast, your investment is only $497. Now, the four sessions uh, you'll have with me alone is valued at $1,750 without the whole program. But I really want to do something special with a group of people where we could journey through the identifying coaching system to discover self and find the one together. I want you to go to identifyingyou.com. Identifying you, the letter U dot com. Identity, I D E N T I F I N D U dot com. You can see some information about the program and you will see registration links on the page. Now, when you click on the registration link, it will bring you to a page for you to input your name and information. You will receive an email with login information to access the program content that begins on May the 1st. Now, I'm going to have a bonus live interactive session for those who register during the Love Blueprint uh, during the three day masterclass. Those who register, let me get that off there because you can't see the letter. Uh, those who register during the, the three day masterclass, I'm going to be doing this free for the next three days until Wednesday. Um, I'm going to invite you to an interactive bonus session where we highlight your real life scenarios, participate in role plays, and have fun as you learn how to rate the date. We're going to do some mock dating. Now, the recap, let's get started. For only $4.97, you get weekly access to lessons, practical activities, and assessments. We'll meet together every other week for group coaching, and those who register during the three-day masterclass will also have that bonus session where we're going to unpack your real-life challenges via role play. Go to identifyingyou.com to register. Today has been a lot of celebration and a, and a little teaching. Tomorrow on Wednesday, we'll focus more on teaching. All right. So uh, that's that, y'all. So I just thank y'all so much for, uh, for taking the time today and joining me on that today. Uh, did y'all enjoy that? Let me know if y'all enjoyed that. It said, you tried to register, but you received the message. This account cannot make live charges. Well, let me go look at that. Let me go. Um, Look and see what's going on. Um, yeah, so yeah, you said besides a man supposed to find you, good thing. Yes. What happens too? I've had a whole no, I ain't gonna get into it. We'll talk about that tomorrow because I'll start getting getting ahead of everything. Um, yeah, I'll start getting ahead of everything. But listen, I want to thank y'all so much for rocking with us. 1627 people on this live. I thank y'all so much. I hope y'all found a lot of value. Thank y'all for supporting the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Thank y'all for showing y'all support. Um, yeah, just thank y'all. Thank y'all so, so much. We're still putting together some dates to go to some other um, churches and events. Uh, I just released an episode today from Bermuda. Watch that episode. It's absolutely powerful. Absolutely powerful. You say you're going to rock with me for life. I appreciate that. Um, you said happy birthday to your daughter. Well, shout out to your daughter, Watch Woman. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know, David. They said what's David's email address? I didn't catch it. But if you go to his Instagram, uh, DM him. He responds to his DMs. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for joining me on this four-year anniversary live. Um, hey, let's go ahead and try to reach a million now, a million subscribers. Let's do it. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Same time, seven o'clock, the Love Blueprint Masterclass. Y'all be blessed.